Hey everybody, it's another Play It Forward. I am playing more Betrayal at Crondor. I'm Beej, that's who the I am who is doing this. Welcome to Loading Ready Runs uh, Entertainment Network. This is not their house. This is part of where I live. Uh, you're, you're in my home, so welcome to the home. Uh, I'm, having, I'm having a productive day. It feels good. It's gonna feel really good to get uh, get into Crondor. Um, let's uh, let's bring that up immediately so you can see that that's about to happen. Uh, and of course, at the top of the stream, I gotta thank uh, people who are watching the stream because you're the reason why we're here. Um, because you like what we do. Uh, it's nice to have fans, and it's also nice that you pay us some money for that. So uh, everybody who's on Twitch, I want to thank everybody on on Twitch. The subs, we're gonna. Thank you at the end of the stream and anybody who gives bits, obviously. And then thank you to people on YouTube who are watching this on YouTube and sharing it with their friends. And also thanks uh, to people who join the YouTube memberships at that point. But then also thanks to the people who back us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. Uh, every little bit of that, that you, if, we, if you go to our Patreon, uh, I believe it even says how much that we're currently pulling in per month uh, from you guys. And... Uh, that's it's a lot of money right like it's like oh wow that's a, that's a lot of money um but in a way it kind of isn't because <laughs> that has to go to pay a bunch of people there's like um there's like 13 employees and there's uh also like all sorts of contractors and all sorts of people doing other sorts of work for us and um you know that's got to like spread out it's great to see 2500 people who are our patrons that's so awesome and if you are a patron uh at a certain level a 10 dollar level i believe you get the you get our one time thank you present thing that will be mailed out we're doing a, another run of that actually here soon um or rather i already generated that list and so that's getting sent so the brand new people who are new to that 10 dollar tier will be uh will be getting their things hopefully shortly uh, but also I want to bring up the Pat Patreon because there's a new post that went up on Patreon. It's, it's, uh, it's actually a, it's a duplicate practically of the post that just went up on the Year of Lurk Kickstarter. If you remember us uh, running that uh, a while ago, uh, the last thing we had to fulfill on that Kickstarter was the Season 11 Blu-ray sets and DVD sets. And uh, I just want to be clear, they're real. They are the real deal. Uh, we have them here. Uh, in fact, I'll even I'll even open the blue one, a uh, Blu-ray one. Uh, I have I have put them into a PlayStation Four and figured out how PlayStation Four worked well enough that I could figure out how how it all uh, comes together. So there's a little sneak preview there. Uh, that's all I can do is is show you that the discs are real. They're finally done. Uh, Graham has worked incredibly hard. Um, we've, we had to do a lot of QA testing on them and QA testing is not easy, uh, when you're having to run through iterations. And, uh, if you ever want to know about how hard it is to make a Blu-ray, um, there's a lot that, you know, you, oh, making a DVD must be easy. And then we made, we made a whole bunch of DVDs for a while. It's like, yeah, but that's not easy. It takes a lot of work. Making a Blu-ray is even harder because it, it isn't anywhere near as straightforward and there are all sorts of rules that when you find out about the rules of how you're supposed to make certain types of Blu-rays and you don't follow them, then you have to go back and fix them. And when you don't find out about all the problems because of all the rules that you didn't know about and you made some problems and then you get your you get your uh, copies back and you have to review them and you discover that, oh my God, there's this problem and why are we having that? And you have to go around and around with the guys who are printing them and say, oh, well, have you tried doing this? Is this is actually the issue? And you have to do all these fixes. Makes things take way longer than it should. And we didn't want to tell anybody that these were done until uh, they had arrived in people's hands and the real deal is here and we have checked them. Uh, they're supposed to be great. Uh, it's nothing to do with the programming. It has everything to do with the specifications. <laughs> they are, they're great. They're done. I'm so happy that they're finished. And if you back the Kickstarter or if you pre-ordered on the store, uh, you'll be seeing emails show up in your, in your email uh, program, in your inbox that will let you know that they're they're ready uh, and they need your new addresses because we have been waiting on doing this for a while and I'm just so glad that, that this this project's finished. I have other projects that I'm trying to finish as well. Um, but I'm glad that this one is finished. I feel really good about it. Um, I'm proud that we were able to get get this finally put together for you guys. Something nice to come out of, you know, come out of 2020 and come into 2021 and see things happen. So I'm I'm babbling because I'm excited. Uh, if you if you were, didn't back 
on Kickstarter and you didn't um uh you didn't pre-order on the store, I think we might have extra copies, but we're not going to put those up for sale on the store until we've actually passed everything through because I don't know what we're actually going to have for extras. We have to wait until everybody gets fulfilled. And if we have anything extra, then you'll see those appear on the store and we'll let you know what's going to happen. And I, but I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Um, so I guess, you know, cross your fingers and hang in there, see what happens. Uh, right. So betrayal at Crondor. When last we left what was going on, we put down a proper save. And where were we? Oh, we're just outside Lamut. Awesome. And, right. We were trying to get the broken crossbow thing to work, which will be a lot of fun if we get that to work out. We're going to have to get some better armor for Locklear here, obviously. We duped a whole bunch of Flaming Quarrels. And uh, we have books. And, of course, we haven't... We read the books once, and if we wanted to have them... We wanted to be able to see what happens... Um, if we read the book some more, we might see things go up some more as well. But we would have to uh, we have to prep um, we have to prep by buying a whole bunch of um, excuse me we have to prep by buying a whole bunch of um, rations to kind of see that through. Uh, but also, what we wanted to do is this is going to be this is this is chapter one the long way around. Um, Normally, chapter one is basically just make a deadhead to go all the way down to Crondor and be done. But you can basically explore the entire game before that. Um, the walkthrough talks a lot about how if you um, if you want, you can go through the Dimwood. We're not going to go through the Dimwood at this point because we're nowhere near as uh, as um, uh, we're, we're nowhere near as powerful as we need to be yet. Uh, and yeah, the as Kaku Epsilon points out. Uh, you can put these books into um, into chests, and a word lock box is a really good way to do that. Uh, and if you put a spy note in there, I believe that means that your stuff doesn't get lifted. So I can go find a box in the north. I think that we already found one that has a spy note in it, um, and I can just drop these books in there and be like, okay, so when we start the next time, we can we can head out. Um, we just basically send the guys up there to go get those books to, you know, learn how to do some stuff. That's a good idea, too. And then I, I guess when everybody's had a shot at the book, uh, that'll also mean that then we can start using... We could use the books probably by, like, in later chapters to start uh, really sitting down and concentrating on getting everybody's levels up even more. Because we could use Thiffer's Bird Migrations, I think, to... Um, increase everybody else's uh, stats, hopefully. I mean, it's an 8% chance whether it happens every time I read the book, so it's not great odds, but meh. Uh, so looking at the the means we can go through here, the help web does talk about the fact that in the Dimwood, there's a lot of uh, scrolls and stuff that Owen can go pick up, and they're scarce scrolls, and I'm like, yeah, sure, that's awesome, uh, but my worry about some of those spells is that I might need them for later in the game anyway, and it might just be a good idea to not bother picking the things out of the Dimwood yet. It would probably be a lot more fun to do a lot of the other things. Now, we can go south into Zone 2. Um, that'll lead us into um, Quester's View and stuff like that. That's in the... Let's open the map here so I can show you where that is. Um, we can go south into... Um, uh, go through Zune and we can go south from here and go to Quester's View and to Sarth. If we go any further south than that, I think once we get to about here, we're kind of hard locked onto having to go to Crondor at that point. So there's like a cutoff point along here where it's like, don't go any further than that. Um, so it might be worth working our way down to Sarth at least. And I think there might even be a temple down here. Uh, and that'll be an easy way for us to warp back here. We go, we do that and then spin back up to Quester's View. Um, and we can come this way and go down to Eglie and Tanniers if we want to. Or we can work our way along the north and do this whole thing. And when we get to Sildan, uh, or we get to Lighten, rather, um, we might continue th past Sethanon, past Tanniers, past Eglie, to go up to Quester's View, to come down to Sarth, and then finish. We won't worry about Dark Mirror Malak's Cross because we'll be doing that stuff soon enough anyway. Um, the, the, special, uh, the, the special page that talks about how to go through some of these areas. Um, 
Let me see here. They're like, uh, in the walkthrough suggested it may be a good idea to enter zone five in order to go through the Temple of Dala, zone seven, it's tempting because of the magical scrolls and stuff. Uh, but you can go through this rest of this area if you want to. Um, they say to explore one and two thoroughly first and get your skills up. Oh, okay. That might not be a bad idea too. Um, and then we can, we can leave, um, we can go through, uh, we can go through Tirsog, which we have, we have been to before. We can leave through Tirsog and go east and then go the long way around this way. We're not going to, we might go up to North Warden. Uh, I'm not entirely certain. We're probably just going to go from Denkanth on the teeth and go all the way down through here and make our way, um, as, as much as we want to. I am not entirely, uh, I'm not entirely like blown away, um, by, oh yeah, there's a thing over here. That's uh, Kaldara. And you're like, well, how do you get there? Well, we talked about being able to go through the mine to get to Elvandar. That's, that's where we go. So there you go, Arc Light. You were asking about that. Um, I think what we're going to do then is we'll work our way up. Uh, from here, we'll work our way up to to Tearsog, and uh, we'll go in through Zone Five. And yes, we can't go through the Macmurdin Cadal to get to Elvandor at this point. Um, we're not going to really worry about doing that. I think it's that's that's very late game stuff. So, God, but would it be a good idea to get to Sarth anyway? We can always backtrack. Because they're saying if you go up through Tearsog, this is now called Zone 5, because you can also go south of High Castle and go right into the Dimwood if you want to, and there'll be ways out of the Dimwood. Um, and then past Tungsten here. Um, Dan Camp on the Teeth. We get through, we get to North Warden. Um, and then you go south, Kenting Rush, uh, Cavill Keep, Prankstone, Romney. Um... Sloop, Silden, Lighten. They're saying to go to Sethanon. Uh, and then even from here, we could go straight, to, like go down to Malik's Cross if we want to and try to take care of all this stuff and Darkmoor. Um, and then from here, you go to Tanniers and Egley, come back up through here and come out to Quester's View. That leaves this entire run completely unexplored. So maybe what we do, I have a better idea. Zoon south to Quester's View. Then go up through here to get to here. Then go through here to go near Hawk's Hollow and kind of come back through L'Oreal and Tearsog, places we've been before, but there'll be nothing new in there. Because in that way, we've kind of picked up that, that arm. We come up this way. We come all along here like this. We come through here. And then if I want to do Malk's Cross and Darkmoor now, I can do that. Or we can go just straight through Sethanon, Tanners, Egley come back out to the Quester's View exit here, and then come down through Sarth and go to Krondor. And I think that's going to be perfect. That's going to kind of cover what we want to do. It also lets us do a little bit more of, of these uh, the South Zones, which is some stuff I think that that's pretty good right now. It also means that if I find a good box, like um, if I found a good box like uh, in the South area, I could leave it down there as opposed to having to put one way up north because I think a lot of things tend to start out of Krondor anyway. And this is Zun, I think. It could be just pronounced Zun, but I like saying Zun. That's the green cat, right? It's a menu. And we don't need any rations at this point. That's fine. We're going to bring the, the audio up on the system a bit so you can hopefully hear the, <clears throat> you can hear the bird singing and stuff. I haven't adjusted the um All right. I haven't adjusted anything else uh any of the other um okay abandoned house uh I haven't adjusted any of the other um things in the game. That's real effing loud. Woof. At some point, I'm going to have to do that. I realize that um, to, to get the sound driver stuff worked out. And yes, the alternative is to avoid Krondor in Chapter 1 until we're ready to end, because you have to get to Krondor uh, to finish Chapter 1. And where are we now? We're 21 minutes in, and we just started to move. That's good news. Okay, so that's Zoon. 
which means we just started to move south, which means now it's all new stuff until if we go to Sarth, we've gone too far. We want to get Quester's view. We want to we want to curl back up again. That's a neat area over here. I wonder what's over here. Anything? Any good? Uh... Do we have scouting on also? That was the thing that I we learned recently. Stealth isn't the thing that I wanted to be doing. Scouting is the thing that lets me like watch for guys so I don't get ambushed. Aha. It's a hole. Containing some royals. And some spoils. Spoils. No, I can't go that way, despite the fact that it looks completely clear. Aha! There are wagon tracks on the ground here, but something's not right. They look fairly old, but the marks are too thin. Ordinary wagon wheels are about, say, six inches. These couldn't be wider than three. There could be an ambush ahead. If we proceed in the direction we are currently heading, we should do so with great caution. Scouting has gone up. 51, 45, 19. Which means that we're going to get into a fight, so we might as well turn all this stuff on. I am definitely a fan of, of being like, oh, yes, that's a good idea. I will definitely be cautious. Let's get into a fight. Okay. Okay, so that dude's already moved. So what we want to do is, I think, to take care of the guy who hasn't moved yet. That gives Locklear a chance to dust this fool. I really, really need to work on this, damn it. Missed. Okay, so that guy's still standing still, so he might... Yeah. Uh, hit him again? I mean, or don't. That's fine, because I also need you guys to bust your... Uh, your... One of you needs to bust your um, crossbow. We'll rest. Locklear gets to shoot this fool. So does Gorath. Got him! That should be enough. Hell yeah, the battle was won. With no effort of our own. Okay, uh, what do you got? Royals? Are you full up? Wow, you are already. Um, okay, well, I'm going to drag that out. because I want you to be able to fix a... Um, to fix that. Craft. Good. And for weapon craft, I guess we'll let Gorath do this one. Cool. We have that back, dude. I don't get it. Their stuff was in such good shape. I think he's dead, Owen said, eyeing the Morgul Warrior's corpse. And he has four rations. Enjoy the party. Ah, oh, really? We got rid of that thing as well, which is nice. Gorat's already got his armor craft on, so or we're uh, already got crafting on. So that's those things. Put scouting back on. I really wish there were. Um, faster ways to move between some of these loadouts for, for the bonus, but yeah. All right. A lot of dead guys here. Probably a good place to sleep. Ah. 
I mean, I did kill those two to fix their stuff. You're absolutely right. Ah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, well, um, Owen already knows how to cast uh, Flame Cast, so I don't actually need this. Uh, do I p take it with me and leave it somewhere? I guess? I mean, it, uh, scrolls are 225 gold at, in, at Lamut. They're probably going to be about the same anywhere else. And that's not a word lock box, so we can probably assume it's not a safe box to keep stuff in. That's the same box, right? Yeah. So my guess is we don't, uh, we're probably not going to worry too much about, like, I would, I think I'd rather just set it aside so I can give it to another spellcaster later on, but because we are going to meet other spellcasters in the game and they might not have the entire loadout of spells. Which is weird when you think about it, because we're going to meet some guys who've been spellcasters for a while, and you'd think that they maybe would have learned uh, Flamecast by that point, but I, I guess not. All right. We are... Okay, we're going to go south a little bit more. Zoom out so it's easier to see. Aha! Preoccupation to dull the senses, aware as if someone had thrown water over him during a pleasant dream. Locklear grabbed Owen's shoulder. Don't move. There is something very not right about the ground before us. It's a trap, I believe. Owen rests. Locklear rests. Send Gorath forward. Rests, lock the rests. Rests, lock the rests. Send Gorath forward. They sighed in collective relief. We were through, we're through it, I think, but Locklear said, but be on your guard, there may be other traps. And I think that. Ah, this took them some time for them to assemble. I thought perhaps the assassins that attacked us this far had followed us through the Inklandel, but there are too many of them, even to chase a renegade like Gorath. Delicon has to be calling on spies already placed within the kingdom. Delicon sits in Sarsargoth. Word of my escape could only have traveled as we have come. The fact that we've been attacked this far south suggests otherwise. I've never been a witness to it, but I've heard of a talent called Mind Speech! Mind speech! Very few magicians have it, but the ability allows men to communicate over very long distances. Perhaps Delicon might have hired such help. It is entirely possible. Even before I escaped from his fortress, it was rumored that the magicians with whom he has been keeping company had such talents. I know that his assistant Nago claimed to have such powers, though I never saw evidence as such. And if Delicon has the capacity, then undoubtedly he shall use his assistance, so we will have to be cautious and watch out for any who seem like magicians as we head for Grondor! Both of you keep your eyes open! There's this tight pass through here. Ah! The pass is empty. It's a five-day journey to the signs to be believed. It'll also be an excellent place to stage an ambush. Think we should take a chance? Yes. Oh, and days passed. It's like the exposed feeling created by the defile. They moved quickly during the nights and left the days to resting under rocky overhangs and listening for assassins' footsteps. At last, foot sore and rabbit road weary, they emerged near the coast of the bitter sea. And that would go back the way we came, I think. Uh, let's have a look around me. Get a sense of where we are. How far did it take us? All right, it just basically shot us down to here. That's fine. We'll be working our way uh, southeast, I have a feeling, but let's see. East of here. You always look behind the mountain because you never know if you're going to find something behind a mountain. Like, these ashes are cold. Someone has been here. We have a fight coming pretty fast, I think. Ah. 
The road was littered with rocks. Instinctively, he knew that they had simply fallen from the sides of the rocky defile which now faced them, but a part of him entertained the notion that perhaps they had fallen onto the roadbed when someone had scrambled up the cliffs to wait their party. If we head to the north, we're not going to the north. So that's the way back to the north, as far as this thing is concerned. Go south for a bit. And it's getting dark, so we'll just camp for the night. I like that it says days passed, right? But we didn't use any of our rations on that entire walk. This is, I think this is just here so you can kind of see how beautiful the, uh, you know, how beautiful the ocean is. But also probably to sucker you away from uh, some things in here in case you were like looking for other stuff. Just to give you more stuff to explore, right? Again another thing are we did i go back up a lot i maybe i did doesn't seem like it maybe i did nope this is a new road ah what's in here the man who greeted them at the door smelled of fish <sighs> folks call me chanty shanty he said after locklear introduced himself after a few more minutes of friendly conversation, he revealed he was a fisherman, but he hadn't been out on his boat for several days due to his health. As he spoke, he threw dark looks at an unseen thing over Gorath's shoulders. Shoulder. Lockler was about to ask him another question when Shanti suddenly mumbled something angrily and slammed the door closed. No amount of coaxing could convince him to open it again. Neat. I wonder what happened out here. Can I, can I get him to open the door? Go away, just leave me alone. Locklear shrugged his shoulders and motioned that he was ready to leave. All right. Are there any chests in this area? How did I miss? Oh no, it's a vessel. It's a, the house counts as a vessel. Ah, all right, we'll just restore that bookmark so I don't have to deal with that. South, southeast, that's the house. Hmm. I dare say maybe this is Quester's view? No, doesn't quite seem right. No one has lived here in quite some time, he said, looking around the empty room. There's nothing in there that's, that's interesting to us either, apparently. Oh. I guess they buried themselves. <laughs> Warning, the fiend beneath this stone is trapped by dirt, not by death. Stay away. Turn to Lockler like Gorath said, shall we dig up this grave? Boy, that seems like a bad idea. I like, I do like, that's 500% BS. All right, fine, we'll dig it up. Ground was too hard. Wiping the sweat from his brow, Lockler threw up his hands in frustration. Feels like someone intentionally packed this down. He said probably the family is afraid of grave robbers. All right. There was nothing there. Oh, there's a dude. Let us, uh, oh, we've gone up some levels by doing things as well, yes. Turn that on, turn that on. I'm glad that their melee has gone up enough that I think they can actually do some real damage now, so that's good. Ah! OK, 
Okay, Locklear charged forward. Caught off guard, their opponent scrabbled around helplessly before finally scoring off in a defensive position. Now, we've read this one before. Okay. So, my biggest trouble is going to be that some of these guys... Yeah, I figured we were going to have that problem. Should have shot the other dude. All right, Locklear shoots the this dude. <laughs> Forty-seven with one hit. Oh my god! All right, Locky again. Forty-five, right to hit. All right, let's see. Sixty-one percent damage. Fifty. Glad we're rolling those dice. This sucks though because Gorath needs a chance to actually do some stuff. And Owen can't do anything. Lockley's gonna move over here and attack that dude. Hopefully that's gonna... Lockley's gonna move over here. No way, Gorath is gonna move over there. We're gonna, we're gonna despair thy eyes this dude. Lockley's gonna move away. To here. Gorath's gonna hit this dude with a flaming quarrel, 87% chance, and ruin his life. <sighs> he was alive! I think Diet Coca Cola is really excellent, dude. It's awesome. Alright, let's look for supplies. Oh, they got some money. And they got some quarrels I don't even give a shit about. And Owen has too much stuff on him that doesn't matter. I'm going to put this over here. And let him do some armor craft. Turn these things off. Armor craft. And then we're going to let uh, Locklear be our weapon craft dude right now. Oh, his accuracy crossbow went up. Nice. That's good. Locky's gonna fix a sword, maybe. Try to hit people. It's funny because the edge that we have on these things is like, you're not gonna get much back, but all right, let's get that sword out of here. I do think it's funny that at the beginning of the game, of course, these guys have um, like, they're Mordral warriors, but they're carrying stuff that's local to the area, right? They're not showing up in stuff that's maybe more uh, racially appropriate. <laughs> it's not a, you know, like, oh, you should be carrying the elf sword and have the elf armor, like that kind of thing. They're like, no, no, we're wearing this because we need to blend in. We need people to not notice that we're, you know, maybe not supposed to be here. Those are normal ass rations. Though it's funny because even though they're secret assassins, like we're talking about, um, we recognize them immediately because <laughs> they're the only people on the road we can talk to. Rabbit GTA, that's better. Yeah, regionally accepted because yes, that doesn't matter about the the racial mod for cuz there's a hum, the racial mods for humans and the racial mods for elves elves uh, are mentioned in the game but really it's i guess you can think about this more as being about what region of of the area they live in in the first place and if you saw someone walking around in elven armor you might start to wonder about that except that we have two of our guys walking around in elven armor right now so mm. all right what is this actually you know what i might do so we'll just put scouting back on. Before I start clicking things, because maybe it'll help. Let's see. What is this place? A bell rang, a shopkeeper. Rygate and supply. Uh, your choices are exit or buy sell. So I could just walk this stuff over that they just, these guys fell over and I took all their shit. Uh, I think we're doing good on all this stuff actually. Um, 
that's gonna go away and that's fine because we already have a pretty good whetstone. We got a brand new one of those. We're never gonna use all that shovel up. We might end up throwing it out also, but we'll see. Yeah, we're fine. And then this cute little road takes us right back out to the main area, I believe. I like that, that it's like, oh, the road you follow uh, to get to there is literally go down to here, curl around, down and go there. All right. Keeping an eye out for Quester's view. Can't get through there. <sighs> okay, can't do that. I have to come back around. Oh, you know what? It's getting dark. We'll sleep some. Wester's view. Um, uh, nice town. Great, great town. There we go. Oh, there's a graveyard. What's this say? It says Quester's View. In case you didn't know where you were. Let's let's talk to people. Come in, come in, chimed a courteous young woman in a brightly colored apron. She held the cottage door open. Kneeling in front of a stone fireplace, a young man was placing several small logs into a crackling fire. The man looked up with a smile. Yes, please, we just finished eating, but I had some luck fishing today, so there's plenty to go around. Locklear's nostrils flared as he welcomed the smell of the barbecued sea bass and fresh bread still lingering in the air. It's a, it's a tempting offer, but I'm afraid we must be going, he said. A drink of fresh water will suffice. Of course! But won't you take some food with you, then? I could have Laurelin prepare a small package for each of you. Good for two days at least. She's quite a cook, you know. Uh, yes. With a smile, the young man motioned to his wife. He moved next to her and helped prepare the rations, stopping only long enough to act out several key moments in a somewhat credible fishing story about a big one that got away. When they were through, they handed several packages to Locklear, accepted them graciously. You have been too kind, he said. And we have received probably two or three rations there overall. Because I know we got some off the other guys. Not bad, though. Most people up to f full 14. Locklear pushed the door open. As he passed through, he noticed the lack of a door latch. A sign the inn was likely chartered by the local lord to ensure the safety of travelers. Hopefully it would also mean the inn's furnishings would be suitable. We might stay here. Babon's Hostel. Conversation within the room halted briefly as Locklear pushed his way inside the room, returning a nod from a gruff-looking pair of mercenaries who otherwise seemed engaged in a dispute over a lost bet. Talk that barmaid... Let's see here. Talk, bard, exit, barmaid, in, way over off the side of the thing, and then that dude. So let's go barmaid, so I can bard, maid. All right. I just, I don't wanna, I'm not effing around here, but I'm gonna blow your minds, everybody, in Babon's hostel. He sung the refrain. We've been over that. That was beautiful, Tavern Keeper said. Reaching his pouch, he removed 60 sovereigns and placed them in Owen's hand. Let's talk to... The fingers are usually good people to talk to first because it generally doesn't mean more stuff is happening. They're like, sometimes it's flavor piece. So where are you headed? Any place interesting? I believe we talked about that. Uh, yeah, Freebooters. We talked about this one already. Um... 
A table was clean, sitting on a splintered bench. Ah, failed love affair with a married woman, so we'd had that. This happens a lot. Steward says, come help us move stuff like we talked about, and then they got up and left. And we're gonna talk to this guy. Good day, said Locklear. Without turning his attention toward them, the man responded, I don't really enjoy talking to travelers, but today I'd rather just enjoy my ale. Very well, then Locklear replied, he heeding the man's wishes, perhaps we will return at another time. He might be a later thing that happens in the game, who knows? In. Ah, we could all use a knight, I think. Nine sovereigns? Oh, fine. Ah, uh, the, the romance of traveling, sleeping in a bed with a bunch of other dudes. Healed. Excellent. Exit. And the party's bardic ability increased. To what? 27. 51. And of course, we're already at 100. We still have not made it to Krondor. We are not going to make it to Krondor for probably another few, uh, few sessions. There were stirrings inside the house. After a short time, a stout lad of about 13 came to the door, opening it wide. If you're looking for my brother, he's not here right now. Actually, no, Lockley replied. Are your parents about? The boy, boy paused for a heartbeat. My folks were killed a year back. Mitch and I moved here several months ago to study swordplay with Tad Quester. We're going to find the bloody brigands who did it and feed them our, their own hearts. Locklear was about to offer some fatherly advice about leaving such work to those older and more qualified, but seeing the boy's expression, he decided against it. Instead, he asked, is Tad good with a sword? What, are you kidding? He's the greatest, lives right over there. The boy motioned towards Tad's house and excused himself, closing the door behind him. One of these is Tad's house. I don't think it's this one. I'm going to put a bookmark down anyway, though. A bell rang, shopkeeper. Ah, Pierce Perry's weapons. That's cute, Pierce Perry. Ah. Buy, sell. Aha. Cash and tap here, which we don't need. All right. First looks at some of the bigger armor in the game. Uh, Ulaliko armor. Commissioned by Earl Kasumi for his Lamushin soldiers, the design was a Tsurani improvement over kingdom armor. Where rigid steel plates had been traditionally riveted, the armor crafter Ulaliko had used instead flexible lengths of horn, which would allow the armor to fold without being punctured. And then we have gray tower plate. Even in its advanced state of deterioration, the Dwarven armor was worth two suits of standard plate. Reddish-brown scales of rust pocked its ancient service, but its original making had rendered it so lifelike it appeared not like a corrupted metal breastplate, but instead a cancerous human torso! And then we have some of the other things. We're back to this again. So, in Chapter 1, we're not going to get... Uh, these are not going to appear in zone one and zone two anywhere else. This is like we have, this is like um, in Yabin at the crossroads where they show you the, the really cool thing. It's like, okay, uh, these are available. You can buy these. The idea is we're not going to have to buy any of this stuff here because I, I want to look for, um, there's a dragon plate, dragon something plate. Uh, we're going to go after that. And whether I need to buy it or whether I need to fight for it, we're going to go after that instead. And we'll probably end up getting some elven armor along the way to, to help Lockie out. Maybe we'll find a Eulaliko armor and I'll end up getting that too. But yeah, that's that's the aim. We're not going to do any of that uh, buying of stuff here because, you know. God, who just who just goes around buying stuff? I mean, we bought those great swords and they rule. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that was the kid's house. Yeah, we'll just spin around in a circle. Knock near. Knock near. Locklear knocked loudly. Presently, a finely dressed man greeted them. As he spoke, he wiped sweat from his brow with a silk handkerchief. Fine day, don't you think? I'm Tad Questor. Have you come for a lesson? His eyebrows raised in a hopeful arch. Lesson? inquired Locklear. The man disappeared into his house and returned with a blunt tip fencing foil. Have you come to learn the finer arts of swordsmanship? He asked, punctuating his question with several impressive maneuvers. I could give you all a quick lesson for only 75 sovereigns. How does that sound? No. I'll come back another time. Excuse me, I have a class to prepare for without another word. He closed the door. So now what we're going to do is we're going to improve uh, melee. I think just melee. I don't think he does anything else. 
And why not teach Owen some of this? Yes, I come with the lesson? Absolutely. Wonderful! Oh, I'm so pleased you've accepted my offer, he said excitedly. As Gorath followed Tad into the small house, he was a trifle concerned about the man's credentials. After all, this strutting little peacock looked as though he had never been in a fight in his life. Their doubts were quickly dispelled as Tad took them through the finer points of sword use. Though he may not have had much experience in the field, it was evident to all he was a master of his art. He was even able to offer Owen a few pointers on how best to use his staff in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The lesson lasted several hours, and they were exhausted when they finished, but all agreed the money had been well spent. And accuracy melee went up. By how much? 58. I think that was like a 7% rise. 65. 83. I think that was about 7% overall. So I think we did the right thing in, um, uh, in doing that. Good. Scouting is back on for everybody. Now, let's have a look here. This is Quester's view. And south takes us sarth. North takes us back through the other area. Right? We go back through here and do this. Maybe I'll go to sarth first then we get to see Sarth. And uh, then we will make our way back along through here, uh, probably take the south route and go up to Tearsog and continue on. Nothing. Nothing weird. Need to keep an eye out for over here. A lot of zigzagging I end up doing in this game, obviously. Aha, uh -huh. a farmer was ahead of them, debating for a moment whether it would be more prudent to hide before they were seen or to behave normally. Locklear decided this man was probably of no immediate threat to them. Bro, I hope for your good health that you have found shelter against the coming Tempest, good sirs. Tempest? Surely you've heard the learned monks of Sarth have predicted a terrible storm is coming this way, and I would hate to think of anyone caught out in it. Why a man could catch his death of the fevers. If you would like, you may write it out in my barn. And what profit would you turn in this enterprise? Five golden sovereigns, a reasonable sum, and the guard over my cows. You can sleep in the hayloft of my barn, but my wife and I don't take in elves. Seven gold pieces, the elf stays with us, and we each get a hard roll for, for breakfast. Ten gold and a lot of you milk cows the next morning. That's the offer. Take it or leave it. Yes. Deal. Where's this barn of yours? Keep heading south. You should pass the Abbey of Ishap at so Sarth. You'll know you're right close to it when you've passed up the Temple of Sung. From there, it's just around Yellow Meal Mountain. They don't label the mountains. When you find the barn, just go knock on the door and my wife will fix you right up. Okay. Thank you, farmer. Your hospitality will be remembered. We're going to drop a save right now, right now. And I don't see any boxes. Nope. That's a chest. Word lock box. Nice. Yeah, there may or may not be a trap here, right? Like, who knows? He might have just got us to give him money so he could screw us over later, right? Buckets, barrels, baskets, cans. What must you fill with empty hands? S-H-O-R-A-S. So let's see. We have S-T-G-A... I know what this is. G L O. V E S Haha -ha. That's useless to me. That's worth something. We will never need those pick locks ever. And what's this? Skin of the dragon. Nice. All right. That's something we can teach Owen. Uh, although he could have wished for better circumstances under which to study it, Owen broke the scroll's wax seal and began to read after an hour's laboring with the difficult language he was able to commit the incantation to memory. We've done this before. The crumble, the scroll 
crumbles away after it's memorized. It knows when you're done. So yeah, that sword is blessed. That's, I think, a level two blessing. It is. It's a number two blessing. You get 10% plus 10% to it. So, um, that's good. I'm just going to leave those there. Largely, we don't need the money. It's 100%. I don't need to give it to anybody else. It's like, that's fine. Oh, that's a dead dude. Poisoned rations. I wonder why he's dead. Oh, there's another, there's the, there's this other way that we did not take. I am going to put a bookmark down and we're going to just quickly look for vessels. Oh, there's one directly west of us that we didn't actually stop near. So we're going to go check that out after we restore the bookmark. So I don't have to give up that uh, 10 health and stamina. I can't see shit, Captain. I think it's over here. Oh, okay. Ah, ashes were cold. <sighs> Money, 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 money. Money. What do you use the three three seashells for anyway? All right, let's get back on the road. Wait, did I go this way? Did, didn't I? It took me to that box. And we went that way. I don't think that was going to take me anywhere, but uh, along the side of the ocean, which is nice. But it doesn't actually lead me anywhere. Aha! We were being watched. Oh, no. Don't know what that did. I might find out later. First things first. I know that means the other guys are probably going to plan on moving, but we can get ahead of this. That's good. I can I can deal with all this. Uh, we're gonna move Owen way over here. Lockie's gonna take care of this dude. Will that be enough? Damn it. Should have shot this guy. Okay, don't hit Gorath. I said not to, and he didn't. That's good news. As always, gank the mage. All right, everyone's dead. And Lockler's accuracy crossbow went up. And we have things to repair. Oh, God. Because <laughs> I've been giving him all the shells to carry. Well, I do want uh, I do want his um, armor to go up, so we're gonna his armor craft needs to go up. I think because if I can just let Owen fix his own armor, um, that'll be great. Even if it is gonna take some time to get there. And uh, Locklear will be the one who not weapon craft armor craft, and Locklear will be the one who uh, does all the weapons for now. I don't need to worry about that. His armor is repairable too. Let's just see here. That's pretty good. Like that. Uh, you know what? Why not? Good. Good, good. Okay. 
That's fine. Put that back here. Lots of stuff that I could pick up, but not gonna. Armor craft has gone up to 34%. That's pretty good. Oh, that's good. What is this? Powder bag. Locklear untied the drawstrings, which, which held closed the pouch and sifted through the ash-colored material within. Buried underneath was a slip of parchment on which had been shakily printed, throw into face a victim. Lornus, artificer of Palunk. I'll just give that to him, I guess. You can have that. Oh, right, yes. Well, you're going to have this. Some very nice armor. I'll give him the slightly less nice armor. Uh, Two-handed broadsword. Uh, so... Lacking the sharp and drooping quillions of the more basic kingdom broadswords, the two-handed variety had much to recommend itself. Heavier than a simple broadsword, the two-handed variety was broader bladed, and therefore more likely to hit and harm its target. 8, 21, 10, 0. So we're looking at 8, 21, right? 36, 52. And yes, this is essentially just pocket sand, is, is what we've uh we've we've run into here. Ah, that's good. Alright. And I could always use more healing. 12, 12. Lots. Uh, we're gonna give you going to give you two. Going to give you two. And everything's fine. And the third dude, oh, the billies have gone up again. Excellent. You're going to fix this. Thank you. You're going to maybe fix that. And you're going to have a brand new whetstone to do it with if you want to. Just in time. Excellent. Yeah, the, the pocket sand, I have no idea what that's going to be useful for because I don't ever remember having an opportunity to use it. Where are we now? Is that, is that the way to Sarth? That is the way to Sarth, okay. Anything else out here? Oh, hey, cool. Oh, right, that's the barn. Okay, okay, okay. Do we go to the barn and then go to Sarth? I, I like that idea. Uh, and in fact, it's it's been an hour since I've been live. So we put a bookmark down. We're going to come back in a second. I always have to come here to kind of like pause it. Otherwise, time might pass in the game. I think time only passes when you move, but whatever. We're going to take a quick break. Please enjoy these commercials. We will see you again in a few minutes. And we're back. All right. Click on over here. I had my uh, had my first vaccine shot today. We're getting uh, I got the uh, maybe I'll just put a safe down right now. Why not? Wait, I did that already. I'm gonna put a bookmark down. That's fine. The garden, a garden was nearby. Wrigley's nose at the smell of fresh fertilizer. Owen pointed out a small cloud of dust that rose off the roadside. Within the cloud, a mushroom-shaped man was hard at work, his hoe rising and dipping over a row of budding pink potato eyes. Flashing his irrepressible smile, Locklear crept up behind the monk. Brother Mark, I have jumped from out of my robes. I have jumped from out of my robes. Hello there, strangers. I hope we aren't disturbing you. No, no, I was about to leave the garden anyway. Busy hand set the mind to work, you know. On your way to Sarth? Perhaps, brother? Brother Mark of Sarth. Glad to meet you. We don't get many Illarati here. Books don't seem to interest the commoners as much as gold or wenching, but we have scholars enough, all going blind from reading worm-eaten worm books and a dozen boys scribbling away their youth in our vaults. It is an unusual place. I have a friend who visited here once. He told me that... You worship the god of knowledge. They do say that, yes, and I suppose after fashion it is true. If there's a question that can be answered in no other place, your best hope is to look in our vaults. Well, there's lots of stuff here. Yeah, um... So, very happy that, uh, to have my, to have my first... Damn, the music just started and then stopped. That was weird. 
I hope you all heard that too, because I didn't expect that, unless my headphones have completely come out. And that seems fine. <sighs> no, yeah, I had my uh, had my uh, uh, first shot today, and uh, just really pleased to have that be taken care of. Um, it's not the single shot; uh, it's the, it's it's a double shot. So I have to. Uh, and they told me that because of the way that they're spacing them, it's like, well, people might have to wait up to like 60 days or whatever. I, I got mine. It said, I'm going to have to wait 112 days. And when I looked at that, I'm like, is that just a, a guess? And they're like, yeah, it's it's just it's just a guess. It's like, that's what they're aiming. Like, it's like, you, in 112 days, you would be eligible. I'm like, okay, cool. But if it if it comes, uh, if it comes um, clearer sooner, then... Um, there will be a, uh, um, I, I will probably get it. So I'm kind of like, all right, that's fine. At least, hey, I got that. And, and since I got it today, it means that I probably won't have any ill effects until like later or tomorrow, which is better than having them right now. So let's ask about casting. Do you know anything about spell casting, Owen said? I know a little of it, though Brother Dominic knows more than about it than I. As soon as he finishes his studies on Quiggy and Civil Codes, I'm certain he would be more than happy to sit down and talk to you about it. He should be only another two or three months at it, I would think. I'm afraid we don't have two or three months to wait. Why don't we leave the brother alone, nephew? Now, don't discourage the boy from asking questions, or he'll be afraid to question anything. I think I might have some time to teach him a bit about focusing. If you can spare a few sovereigns, say 50. Is that acceptable to everyone? Uh, not yet. We're going we're gonna to focus the focus. Really, we have other things we must do. We appreciate the offer nonetheless. If you change your mind, the offer will stand. Thank Christ. Road south. Are there any hazards on the road south of here for, uh, to Crondor? We are in something of a hurry, and I would hate to run into any unexpected delays. Are there any complaints from the travelers that have been through here in the past few weeks? I don't think the mercenaries that stopped by to speak to Brother Dominic said anything of it. Mercenaries? They're not in Quiggy and Press Gangs, are they? Not to my knowledge, no. These lot landed just south of Quester's View on a strip on the ship called the Foam Spinner. As much as they've been up and down the road, I assume they were in on a shore leave. Were there many of them? Many of them? If you laid them head to foot, I imagine you could walk across the Straits of Darkness without getting your feet wet. It seems one of those queaking galleys can carry a small village from one place to another. All right, bad weather. So when is the storm going to hit? We are a little concerned about finding a place to stay so we don't get soaked. Storm? It is the first I've heard of such a meteorological disturbance, brother. Giram didn't mention it to me before I left the Abbey this morning. That's strange. We met a gentleman named Roe who said a storm had been predicted by the brothers at the Abbey. I wonder why he would tell you such a thing. Of course, he, is, he has been acting peculiarly since his wife died. Terrible tragedy and striking at such a time when he had to give up his farm. I really must feel for the poor old, old soul. Poor old soul. Spells. I know a little more about spell casting. Yeah. Perhaps it's a simple spell you could teach me? Owen. Just something simple so we can defend ourselves in case we run to anyone hostile on the road. I don't know what you imagine is waiting out there for you, but I believe I have just the thing. I'll have to run up to the vaults to search for it, but it's a little spell called Flamecast. Of course, it'll be the matter of a fee, say 30 sovereigns. I know precisely where it is. Come to run and get it. Shall I? No. Second thought, I've probably spent far more today than I can afford. Very well, let me know if you change your mind. Vaults. Excuse me. Is it permitted for outsiders to browse the books in the vaults? I'd be interested in looking them over. It's fine with me, but it's Brother Anthony you may have to convince. He doesn't like strangers wandering around down there without supervision. We have a number of rare and valuable books, and it would be the worst kind of tragedy to lose them to a casual browser. I'll warn you, though, you may have difficulty finding what it is what you want. Many of the books have never been cataloged. That's weird. Didn't expect that to happen. And unless you know very specifically what you're looking for, either by the scribe's name or the title of the work, you might not find anything that will be of any value to you. Inns. Do you know of any good inns in the area? I think I might sleep a little better if I could bed down on something other than cold ground tonight. There are a few. You might try Babin's Hostel in Quester's View or the old Bywater Inn. If it weren't for my duties here, I would be half inclined to join you. Some acolyte somewhere has been trying his hand at dream sendings and I've not had a good night's sleep in weeks. Dream sendings? It's a way to send messages over long distances. Only certain magicians have the talent for it. Whoever it is, they can't be too far away because his images are fairly strong. What do they seem to be trying to say? I'm not certain. The images are too disjointed. Though, now that I think about it, I thought I had seen your elf friend's face before. Now I know why. His face was in the sendings. Goodbye. We at least have a few things to think about. Thank you, Brother Mark. Always a pleasure to help. Come back and visit me again. Perhaps we will. Goodbye. So we're going to turn casting on. Wait. Is Brother Mark... 
Brother Mark is a focusing or is he something else? Uh, yeah, it's just casting. Oh, I see. Uh, buy flame cast from him and then sell it at the Sarth shop for a profit. <laughs> that's good. Not gonna bother, but that's, that's funny. No. Brother Mark, come back. The path turned after a few minutes of traveling, the roadbed began a steady rise, spiraling around the base of a sheer rock-faced hill. Sarth, Lockler said. We probably have enough time to drop in for a brief visit. It might break up the monotony of the road. Want to take a look around? No. I want to trigger a conversation with Brother Mark. Maybe I can't do that until I go inside. All right, let's go into Sarth. We'll come back. Sarth. From a distance, the Abbey of Ishap at Sarth had seemed a fortress, its sheer walled courtyard dominated by an ancient single-story keep. The closer inspection revealed that a shop profited where once an ironmonger had forged swords, delicate flowers bloomed where soldiers had once mustered. So there's a few things here. Exit. Goes to the shop, goes to enter, goes to temple, goes to another enter. I say let's try the shop first. Stardock Annex? Oh, yeah. Owen oh, ogled as he picked through the assortment of magical items which had been laid out in the improvised store. Many of the items were marked by tags which indicated they had been sent from the Academy of Magic run by Pug of Stardock. Good start. Lightning staff. Made of light birch, the staff would be easy to swing around should the knees arise. Should the need arise. Doubtless it had been put to magical uses as well. Several lightning sigils were burned along its wavering length, the points of their bolts originating from a small crystal globe affixed to the knobby head of the staff. Then enchanted quarrels, which are very expensive as well. Archers instantly knew it on sight. Flights misaligned on the shaft, head malformed, spine too rigid to allow level flight. It was a disgrace to anyone who crafted arrows. And yet, the enchantment worked into the misshapen bolt by its sorcerer's maker made it a peerless quarrel. If we find some of these, we are probably going to, um, uh, going to dupe those. And, yes, magical scrolls. Dragon's Breath. Despair Thy Eyes, which I already have. Flame cast is 400, Jesus. Skyfire. Eyes of Ishap. Nightfingers. Necrosixatrix. Skin of the Dragon, which we just found. Thoughts like clouds. Want to just see what happens, don't we? Don't we all want to see what happens? All right, turn casting off for the meantime. Oh no, you get effed. And do we need rations? Ah, oh, we're good on rations. All right, not gonna worry about that. So the other things are the temple. Let's go to the temple. Temple of Ishap. All the same stuff that we've seen before. Fire was cold. That's weird. Lockler squinted. This wall looked strangely barren, as if a space had been prepared for decoration which had not yet been crafted. Lockler pulled the curtains aside. All the same stuff that we normally see. Talk. The abbot came quickly. A man of advancing years. His hair and beard seemed like Hair and beard seemed like a snowdrift, starkly in contrast to his dark skin, which was wrinkled like carefully crafted mahogany. Shaking Locklear's hand, he greeted them as if he had known them all their lives. Welcome to Iship's Abbey, travelers. I am Father John. How may we be of assistance to you? We thought while we were passing through that we would come and visit the famous Abbey of Ishep at Sarth, Locklear said. 
You've done some impressive things here. The abbot's eyes crinkled as he gave them a prideful glance. We hope to do more. We've only begun our work here, but thanks to Brother Anthony and Brother Mark, we have come a long way. Locklear bit his lip, hesitant to ask his question. Could we impose upon your hospitality a bit? We have a few questions. I would love to, though, alas, I have services to attend at the moment. But if you have questions, Sartha is the place to come. You have books on many things, and if you seek out Brother Mark, he can help you with a good many other questions. Good day to you. And that's it. Now, if we wanted to bless this, the great sword, it would cost us 445 sovereigns. We can afford that. We might even do it. Um, if anybody else is reading the... Um, uh, the help web and can tell me if uh, Sarth and the Abbey of Ishap, if Ishap's a god to go with with like the best blessing, please let me know because I would rather do that. I Like if we're going to bless stuff, I might as well do it while we're here, right? We're going to go in here, I think. The library. A supernatural silence reigned in the vaults under Sarth, a perfect stillness which was unbroken even when a priest would accidentally let a fall a book while searching the shelves, or when someone would sneeze while opening a dusty volume. It was as if, as if time itself had been frozen here, trapped between the wooden cases like pages within a book. Lots of stuff to look at. Let's see here. The shelves were overburdened, massive books which all appeared to be older than anything Locklear could imagine. Most of the works in the section appeared to be concerned with theology or philosophy. Not as well versed in the history of the gods as he would like, he reached for a less intimidating looking volume and began to read. After an expansive description of Kuhuli, the god of revenge, and how he was often misperceived by most of the common folk of the kingdom, the book made brief mention of a series of penances required of the faithful, including an odd practice known as mortification, in which they starve themselves to make themselves worthy to the temple. It also listed the fact that the most frequent petitioners into the temple were assassins. Gorath smiled. Pleased to find something in the vaults which appealed to his interests, he thumbed through a book which apparently had something to do with combat techniques. Getting as a basic soldier's text, it seemed there would be a little of value to be found in the book, but moments before he closed it, he stumbled across a treasure house of information in the last chapter. Ah, okay. Thank you, Lurker Spine. So, the Chapel of Ishap is the cheapest place to get it done. And we're going to eventually end up around Malak's Cross anyway. But that is, like, late later in my run. I could probably do without the Bless for now. Um, it said 445. Which is like I seven fifty. These things cost so half of that's three fifty plus ten or three seventy five. So almost under four hundred. Okay, so I'll just kind of I'll hold off until we do the run. I'll be strong enough otherwise, and then getting the blessings will be this like a nice little bonus. This last chapter is reserved for the most well prepared of soldiers who are also familiar with the enemies they are to face in the battlefield. With an adequate amount of information before battle, it is entirely possible for an enemy to be defeated even when the enemy has the advantage of surprise, providing you learn what their natural weaknesses are. By exploiting this feature, it is possible to take down enemies who might otherwise seem unkillable. Based on reports gathered from soldiers from different battle situations, it seems that the following things tend to be true. Trolls in general seem to take more harm when they are attacked with any form of magic, but they likewise are resistant to physical harm. When fighting magicians of any stripe, it seems that they are generally more poor when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat, though there are exceptions to the rule. Though wyverns have never, to my knowledge, been exploited for use in battle, farmers troubled by the red variety have spoken of good results when attacking with blades prepared with an Althafane's icer. I highly suggest that in the future you attempt to take notice of similar weaknesses and resistance so you may use your resources to the fullest of advantage. Excellent. Uh, this one over here, I guess. Books concerned magic. Magic! Snatching the closest volume at hand, Owen began scanning the pages, hoping to find a grammary of spells from which he could learn. Flipping pages, he was nearly oblivious of the priest who marched down the aisle and snatched the volume from his hands, politely replacing it from where it had come. These books are restricted, 
the priest said sternly. Long ago, he learned the wisdom of making sure an initiate had some training before embarking on reading our magical themas. I've had some training, Owen began, but was silenced by a hard look from the priest. You're, you are more than welcome to visit our other collections, but this is restricted, the priest said, his tone indica indicative that he would tolerate no argument. I am sorry. Hang on. That one. Owen scowled. The books arrayed before him all concerned theories of finance, a subject which his father long ago exhaustively bored him with. While he, what he, while he thought he would never again be interested in the subject, he found himself reaching for one of the volumes. Immediately upon opening it, he discovered it was a simple ledger containing only row upon row of numbers which didn't seem to add up properly in his head when he ran his finger across the columns. Closing it with a snap of his wrist, he replaced it on the shelf. Healer's journals littered the shelf. By far the most extensive collection within Sarth's impressive stacks of books, Locklear felt a little intimidated. Unsure what titles or names would be of the most use to him, he picked a book at random and began to read. Unfortunately, much of the book he had selected was confusing or contradictory, and after struggling with it for nearly half an hour, he finally gave up, putting it back on the shelf where he had found it. Next book, he thought. So let's see here. We did that. 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 All right, so mostly a way for us to discover a few things. And then enter here. Trees whipped at their faces, mumbling about the inconvenience of castle engineers. Owen led the way down the fur-covered slope, arriving at last at the mouth of a large cave. Told you I wasn't mad, he muttered. Looks like a cave mouth. Want to have a look inside? Yes, they made their way into the blackness. All right, ring. Ah. Locklear had no idea what to do with the Ring of Prandir. I could be wrong, but it looks like a magician's handiwork, Owen said. Not sure if I have room in my rucksack right now, but I'll take it off your hands if you like. So you need a magician to use these. Exit. And we're going to put a bookmark down here, I think. And we're going to zoom out. There's a door. It is locked tight. Think you should take a shot opening it up? Yes. All right. Ah. We cannot sleep here, and that's a big ass spider. Can we sleep here? Nope. All right. Maybe we'll come back. So I can't do anything here just yet until I have a sleep, apparently. But let's leave. Uh, let's set Owen's casting back on. Been great if her haggle had gone up, but... And let's see if I can talk to Mark. I know, yes, just shut up about that. There we go. I see you didn't get your ear full last time. What brings you back to the Brothers of Sarth? Casting. Spellcasting? Yes. Teach me, please? Yes. Ah, an enthusiastic student. Delightful. This will be a pleasure to teach. Owen blanched. He'd been assigned a simple enough task. Cast a teleconnect spell to move his satchel closer to him. Instead, his satchel remained obstinately stationary while hurling Brother Mark backwards into his well-tended crops. Are you all right? Owen gasped. I didn't mean for that to happen. You're still depending on your eyes, Brother Mark sighed, brushing a stalk of corn out of his face as he struggled to his feet. Concentrate. If you find yourself in a situation where you can't see what you're affecting, all the spells in the world will be utterly useless to you. Instead of trying to see your target, try to feel it. Let's try this again. I know you'll learn this eventually. We don't have any more time to waste, Locklear said. Why don't you pick up your things and we can get ready to move, Owen? Again at his feet, Brother Mark went to console his downcast pupil, patting him reassuringly on the shoulder. Remember, feel the target. That's the key. Until then, I suggest you stock up on a good supply of Luton's Concentrate to get you through your exercises. And that's that is now gone. Now, if we want to, we could buy flame cast from him. You can be quick about it. I won't be a moment. I'll return as quickly as my little feet can move me. They waited. When last it seemed the priest was never going to return, he appeared waddling down the hillside, a beribboned parchment missive stuffed beneath one of his arms, collecting the money owed him from Gorath. He cheerfully handed over the scroll. Nice. And that's all for that. 
and his casting went up. And I didn't even bother to look to see what it's gone up to, but that's actually pretty good. So now we're gonna turn on uh, all this other stuff. And we're gonna have a nap. Because now I want to go look under the caves of Sarth. Hell yeah. Okay, let's put an actual save game in this place. 17. Save. All right, it's dead, get rid of it. Let's see how well we can do in this place. But generally things don't leave their rooms. All right. Their advantage was lost, holding in hand to halt the advance. Lockler contemplated a new course of action while his stomach tied itself in knots. He, as many times as he, said he had found himself in a fight, he could never sh shake the strange feeling he was about to die. Now, will this work? Fire should work on these guys, right? I think I put Gorath in the wrong spot. Well, we're gonna we're gonna risk it. Oh, that worked. All right, check the bodies. You know, just walk up to a giant ass spider and look to see what it has. When you discover it's nothing, try not to be surprised. Now, one thing that is nice about this game, as I've understood it, is that, uh, oh, somebody died here, is that when you've, um, when you've Made your way through... We're going to take that torch just in case. It's going to be our way out. Just if something bad happens. Those are still good? Wow, okay. Um, is that when you walk in somewhere and you fight, uh, that's all you're going to get, right? Is like the, the fighting has occurred. Um, there's not going to be another fight in that same room, or at least there's not supposed to be another fight in that same room. Now, if we look at the map. Don't believe there are any other. Yeah. Okay, nothing else is going on in here. We can leave this place because I'm pretty sure there's no boxes. There's no chests. That torch is going to be uh, the emergency way out if something bad happens. It's like, oh, I lost all my rings of Prandir. I guess I have uh, the the spell that Owen can cast, but you can't always rely upon that either. Turn left. All right, we could get we could just keep stacking all that rope if we wanted to as well. We're going a one click at a time because I am trying to ensure I don't run into a pit. Yes? Oh. It's a chance for Locklear to get better at lockpicking, I guess. 
not everybody gets to go up on these things, right? So. It might be that this is a something that is not possible to open without a proper key, but we'll see. Just bump that up a bit so everyone can enjoy it too. If I get him up to a hundred on this, I'm gonna be really mad. It's like, oh shit. Is he going up? He is gaining he's gaining points at least, so even if this doesn't, if I end up breaking like a dozen pick locks or two trying to do this, I don't care. I mean, if his if his ability is going to go up, that's kind of not bad. So I changed out the sound font for the Merlin Vienna instead of, I think I was using the SC55. Um... Somebody was saying uh, on a forum how they like they like the Vienna better because it has more realistic instruments. And I'm like, wavetable, wavetable. They're all going to sound a little bit different, but they're all going to be like, uh, They're all not going to sound like actual, are they? They're going to be they're going to be close. But yeah, if, if I'm assuming it's calling uh, actual MIDI commands because every time I do this, um, I can see my virtual MIDI synth that's actually processing uh, voices. So I think that's actually just a MIDI call for the sound effect. I wonder if it has to be 100%. I feel like we're going to be here a while then. That's fine though. We've done this before. I mean, Pixel Art Dragon, you do say this might be a story lock. Uh, it's true. It might be something where I have to get a key and, you know, try it out. I mean, the longer I'm here too, though, are we not also eating food? We might be eating food at the same time. I wonder how long it's going to take. It might be like, we need sleep. And I'm like, oh, shit. And like, we need food. And I'm like, we've been at this for a dozen hours. I wonder if because I've selected Locklear, because it keeps saying Locklear's name, but when I had Owen selected, it said, oh, that's not a... It's like, uh, Owen tried this, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's how it works, is whoever's carrying the lockpicks, that's one thing. But whoever you select is the person you're actually having to do it. That would be interesting. Because it would mean that then I could train somebody else without having to like give them the pick locks. I can just let Locklear carry these around, but he can give them to somebody else to try. How's he doing? 77% still. All right, you just did the whole lock looks complicated thing. It 
This is the lockpicking Locklear, and today I have for you a lock found in a door in a cave under Sarth. Not sure where it was manufactured, but uh, it seems to be a very sturdy lock, and it gave me some trouble when I tried to open it previously. Now, we've tried to open it with a peasant's key, but obviously uh, these little keys will just break apart if you're not fitting them in the right lock, and the Gilder's pass key proved to be uh, to be uh, ineffective. So I'm using some bottom of the keyway tension here with a wiper insert, and I've got these pick locks in some sort of manufactured thousands of a percent, th thousands of an inch, because this is medieval times, and I have no idea how to uh, measure things at that that size. Nothing on one. Uh, click out a two. Click out a three. Click on a four and some counter rotation, and uh, click on a five. Nothing on six. Back to one. Click out a one. Think we've dropped into a false set. Uh, there's a lot of those YouTubers that are just like the single thing that it would be a lot of fun to to try to collab with someday. But yeah, where did we get to here? 79. All right, we'll go till he hits 80. And if he can't get in with 80, then, then we're done. I'm using these pick locks that you can buy, uh, that I now make available, uh, buy from my store on covertinstruments.com. I would hate to do a competitive lock picking uh, live segment uh, with him because. <laughs> It would be one of those things where it's like, okay, so now everybody start picking your lock. You've all got practice locks. They're all clear so you can see what you're doing, right? Okay. He has an identical lock. He can't see what he's doing. And he's going to give you a five-minute head start. And he would ruin us. I did watch the video where he got to show off his uh, his prize from, a, uh, from a, a lock sport competition he was in. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Good for him. Doesn't talk too much about... Okay, it's 80%. I think this is either locked with a virtue key or something else. Yeah, okay. That didn't work. What I need is a wave rake, apparently. All right, so how did we how did we do here? 80, 80, uh, 81% is fine. I guess maybe we'll just leave defense on scouting off it's okay we're not gonna get i don't think ambushes exist even down in mines we have moved through it's taken us no time to do any of that so we could literally just sit here all day and and uh and just pick away at it until it's done that's super weird all right now this is very loud so there might come a point where... Oh, hi. Where's this go? Blockley just appeared up the stairs. He returned a minute shaking his head. This leads off to a series of complicated mind tells. There may be a passage to the library that vaults through there. Without a map or some directions, we would never find our way through. Okay. Well, we know it's down there. <laughs> I'm looking for... There's a four-way stop coming up. Not here yet. All right. Turn left. I love the water drop sound effect. Oh, that looks like a dead end. Yep, can't do anything over here. I do like the idea of like, need some storage? You've got these mine shafts. Oh, okay. Yeah, shit, well, hang on a second. Drop a bookmark, let's give it a shot. That is an easy lock. I'm gonna, just for the sake of letting him get that. Excellent.
What the shit is that? Oh, giant scorpions. Ha! Oh, I'm f I am effed. How did you... Okay, we're probably going to die here. Oh, maybe we're not. <laughs> Goreth can't shoot when you're in the way. But he can get in front. Maybe tank something here. Okay, can I despair thy eyes, a scorpion? Sure can. Man, man, those... <laughs> Whew! We were safe for the moment. Ah, Owen's defense went up. That's good. I guess getting attacked makes your defense go up. How am I doing actually? We're all we're all normal, right? Everyone got attacked, but we're all normal. That's great. Uh It's fine. That's fine. I think Gorath took a bit of damage. Yeah. All right. Let's give him the armor's hammer. He can repair his own armor. And these guys are also going to have to do their own weapons, I think, as well. Let's make sure that they've selected for that. Weapon. Weapon. I think that's fine. I can, I can deal with all that. Man, we are carrying a lot of shit. Anything? Be surprised if these things had anything on them. They don't. Thank goodness. Be a trap chest in this room almost assuredly. <laughs> That's where we came in. And there's the chest. Uh, ah, there's two of them. Okay. Let's drop a bookmark. We try to open it. Uh, hang on a second. It's fine. I don't need to turn your lockpick on. It's just going to be blocky doing it anyway. Ah, Gruff fell to his knees. Overwhelmed by his condition, he's unable to rise from the ground, help us to aid, and someone fell near him. A friend, enemy. Could he tell by the sound? We should, Locklear whispered, breathing in dust as his vision began to clear. We should have been more care. Death came quietly. All right. Bookmark is what I put down. So let's restore from the bookmark. That is a 81%. Uh, and I still got blown up. They do not want people opening these boxes. Ah, this is a word lock box. Might not need to be down here at this point, maybe. Who knows? All right, I had sent a Sereg, right? I could still use the, god damn. I forgot that's what you're supposed to do is cast that first, Jesus. A box beneath a tree inside some tasty meat. Kept for a month or more, it still tastes just as sweet. Oh, this is gonna be rations. Uh, it's not. Box beneath the tree inside, inside some tasty meat. Kept for a month or more, it still tastes just as sweet. Not acorns. I shalud. Let's see here. C. Ash. 
Apples, you say? Uh, no, there's no pea there. Box beneath the tree, inside some tasty meat. Kept for a month or more, it still tastes just as sweet. I don't think casket. That'd be interesting, though. It, some sort of nut, though, right? Maybe it is walnut. What's this? Luton's Concentrate. Ah, yes. On countless occasions, Garth had observed musicians carrying vials of the same fluid, almost always down in concoction before setting to work, casting incantations. For a brief period of time, the imbiber would seem intensely focused, ignorant of events outside his purpose. It's definitely something to give to Owen to hang on to. I, he tends to hang on to all these things, it seems. We can definitely dupe all those things, yes. All right. So people are saying, right, you should cast the damn spell, and, and you're right. So, I can now sense whether this chest is trapped. It is. Should we try to deactivate it? If my level is not high enough, it will go off anyway. Okay, we could deactivate it. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. People want me to start duping things here, so... Uh, let's see. Might as well start carrying full loads of things. Dollatail milk? Sure. No, nope, it's not full here. What do I have to put in this chest to fill it? Oh, uh, no. That. Two. Oh, there's not enough room. Okay, it's full now. go nice he has too much of everything Uh, you know what? The Dal Tail Milk's probably fine. We'll drink that at some point. That's fine. We got lots of rope. I don't need to worry about torches. Can't do brings. And I guess I'll just drink this for now. I don't think we're going to run into anything else, but it gets that out of my inventory for the time being. Got lots of those. All right. Drank some of that. Nothing else that I think we really need to uh, do at this point. Yeah, I think that's fine. Nothing else in this room, correct? That room is empty. The only other thing down here is that room we can't get into. Let's have a look. Where do I need to go to get out of here now? Because I'm pretty sure we're done here. Uh, that was a dead end. That was, a, that was something we couldn't get into. That led down further. We need to go uh, north. Okay. We did that room. There's our 
bag with the ring that's useless in it. You know what? Maybe I'll just take it and see if I can sell it to the uh, to the shop in the abbey. I doubt they'll they'll want it, but whatever. Yeah, let's keep going. You sure, ready to get going again, Gorath? It's like yes. Why are you asking me that? Cool. How much for these? <laughs> That's Luton's concentrate, dude. That's this, literally the stuff. Whatever, fine. This is flame cast. This is flame cast. I I'm gonna get these out of my inventory. I don't actually need these, so we're just give them away. It's fine. Will you take these? Oh, you'll take those as well. Okay. It's money, and I mean, that's fine. And I could use the space in my inventory for stuff that I actually give a crap about, so yeah. If I need to find other things later, I'll find other things later. We're not going to go all the way to Hawk's Hollow just to sell stuff or wait for Krondor or whatever at this point. It's like, I know we're kind of going to be on our way to there soon, but I'm like, nah, whatever. Let's get it out of my inventory. It's fine. And... Huh... <sighs> I know, yeah, right? Kaku Epsilon, we made some money. Bought for 30, sold for 136 each. I know I can find a lightning staff somewhere else in the game. So I feel like it's not that necessary. So I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'd rather stumble upon it and be happier later on. We've done all the other things. So we're going to exit Sarth. It's really bright out. And let's have a quick look at the um, map. Because if I go further south, we end up in Krondor. We're not going to do that. We're going to work our way back to Quester's View and do what we said beforehand. Uh, but it is like 10 o'clock. Well, okay, let's start making our way back there. And then when we're, I've actually been live for two hours, that's when I'll, that's when I'll stop. Oh, we need rest. Okay. This is a camp until healed situation, really? Where are we now? We're just about there. Oh, we're going to fight. That is a pirate, I think. All right, to spare your eyes. Lock clear. right there too oh okay we got a few of these dudes um you I think sixty two do fifty sure eventually yeah uh eighty five do fifty yep yeah. That guy's going to wake up. Or rather, he's going to be able to see again. Nice. Now, you know what? We'll just rest Owen. Owen definitely needs to have some sleep there's an inn in quester's view actually i think we'll actually we will stop uh at the inn let's go to the inn in quester's view i'll put a save down there and we'll take our commercial break once we look through these dudes ah that's nice we should probably put these things back on Oh, that is a different key. Noble's pass key, the gold key felt weighty in the palm of his hand, maybe with the noble arrogance that deemed such a flagrant display of wealth necessary, known widely as the noble's pass key. The type was legendary for its tendency to snap off and locks at inconvenient moments. 
I feel like that's uh that's what might get us into that other place. Uh right. I don't need a torch. Give that to you. Oh! Broken elven crossbow. Nice. His is still good. So when we make our way back towards uh Lamut, I think that's when we'll actually deal with that. Let's see here. Whetstone. Throw that away. Oh right. He has to turn his weapon craft on. Shit. Turn your armor craft on. I'll won't worry, I won't do Gorath on this one. Uh let's see though. I need the hammer. Oh wait, he should do his own armor. Um right. And yeah, I think that's what I need. Oh, it's fine. What am I thinking about? Great. Great. Don't need any of that stuff. It is a lot of fun to see what these guys are carrying around. Um Yeah, we could we could definitely uh uh like you can just get new bowstrings, which is what this is. If I just add that bowstring onto the um a broken whatever, it will just take it up to 100% again, which is great. Um the aventurine that he has acts as a the weapon crafting. It's like a whetstone for you put this on your on your strings, it keeps them in better shape. Um basically you can just keep them running forever by doing that. But I want to go to Lamut. And because that's a place where you can sell crossbows back. And then get them for uh, a, a single uh, royal. So I didn't think we said Quester's View was where we were headed. South of Crondor. Well, nope, that's not what we're doing. I mean, maybe I can sell it here? Let's see. Um, let's put a bookmark down. Have a quick look. Could I sell it here? Okay, accept. <laughs> Not on your life. The reason you do this in Lamut, though, is so you have access to, to all sorts of uh, the crossbow strings. So you can do that. Um, now, if I sell him this string, that should be made available, right? And if I was just the kind of jackass who's like, hang on a second, I've got an idea and I want to show you something. And he's like, what do you want to show me? He's like, well, here, you're going to give me this for way cheaper than it, than it costs. I promise. You're, and you're going to love this. It's a really great trick. That's very acceptable. Yep. Excellent. I don't know if I buy another one. Can I just immediately use it? You can. Okay, so that's good. So now, with the remaining space. It's nice having all this money because it just is kind of like, well, what do we do with all this, with what's remaining here? Well, we're going to figure something out. 
Uh, first thing I'm going to do, we're going to buy a few of these nice light bowstrings. Sell that back. bit more space, so we're going to take two of those back. Where does he keep getting these brand new elfin crossbows from? He just keeps reaching into his sack and pulling them out. Anyway, the adventuring will be a nice way to keep uh, to keep it up at 100% if I need to. Uh, okay, we have demonstrated uh, infinite rad, so I don't need to do anything more with that at this point. What do we have for... That's a 16. That's a 12. That's a 16. I don't need this. <laughs> All right. Um, has please one of the uh, somebody who has, knows what's actually all, in all the commands. I think Lurbot even tells you what all the commands are in chat. Do we actually have we have demonstrated a loop the opponent must concede as as part of um, uh, our advice or something? Our haggling went up. Hooray! All right. So now I know we can make a ton of money. If we come back to Pierce Perry, we can we can buy a single royal whatever, and I believe I'm able to also buy a um, uh, the the I'm able to buy the um, the bowstring I need as well. And hell, it's really near Sarth, so practically when they repair the thing at Sarth, so I can warp, I could go to another area and introduce that uh, like a virus into other parts of the world. Uh, so we did say we're gonna go to the in probably can't bard but yeah we're done we're gonna in and we're gonna stay here nine sovereigns and try not to get robbed let's see here we're in a good mood yeah yeah, yeah. how about we do it again nine sovereigns that's really close to being good might as well, whatever. Worth the full heal. Yeah, not gonna do any of that. Oh, do we need, uh, do I need any rations? 11, 11, 13. No, I think that's enough. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is put a save down. And I'm going to take a quick commercial break. Again, enjoy three minutes of this stuff happening. I'll run an ad break. Everything will be great. See you soon. Hi, welcome back. More Play It Forward here on Loading Ready Run. It's the trail at Krondor still. We put a save down. Yes, we did do that. So we're going to cancel and return to the thing. All right. We've stayed through the night. I have this friggin' Noble's Passkey, and I cannot remember if that opens that lock below Sarth and whether it's worth going down there. Uh, it's probably fine to just move on. I can move on fairly fast. Wait, let's see, is that kid there? Oh yeah, that kid's not gonna come to the door again, whatever. All right. So thus begins, uh, rather than going directly on to Krondor, thus begins the actual walking around the wrong way and, uh, and, and, and doing stuff. And we'll see whether or not it's a good idea. First, we're going to put scouting on for everybody because I want to work on that. The nice thing is, I mean, at some point, I'm going to be good enough at all this stuff that I don't have to turn some of these things back on. <laughs> And that'll feel nice, right? That'll feel great. Oh, here's a place. What? What? Okay. 
Whoa! Morgan Hurley's. Oh, I see. Selling the things that you... Aha! Another place to buy the trading book if we needed it. We don't need to do that, and I don't think I have anything that he needs. You know, I realize, though, um, if everything in the game is uh, based on uh, you'll always be able to buy this thing again, then if I take Thiffle's bird migrations and sell it to a store, it will be available at that store for me to buy in the future, uh, which means that then I can always come to that store and buy it. Like, <laughs> if I can find a store that will buy it off me, then I can do. And I mean, he sells books. Let's put a let's put a thing down. Bookmark. Go in here. Buy sell. If I sell you this book, which is supposed to be super handy to me, accept. And then I bought it back, and it's an expensive book because it. I mean. The abilities. No, 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 no. That's a good drop. I'll just take that. Thank you. There. Now we have it back in our stash, and it's, I believe, it's there forever. Did our haggling go up at all? I doubt it. Yeah, as Kaku Epsilon points out, um, only some stores will buy some things. And so depending on the kind of store you're at, like if you're at a magic store, you can't sell them swords. If you're at uh, an item store, you can't sell them magic stuff. Like it largely depends upon the kind of store that uh, wants to like, that can take things from you. So sometimes you try to sell something and it's like, I have no need for such an item. And you're like, oh, well shit, I can't do that here. The the broken crossbow thing um, is brought up as a thing to do in Lamut because while you're in zone one and, and around Tearsog and like in that whole area, if you're using your crossbow all the time to shoot things, you should be able to, to ruin some dudes um, pretty easily. So that's, that's, I think where we just were, yep. Keep moving this way. Uh, you'll be able to bust that crossbow up by just like shooting at a whole bunch at all the guys that you're trying to attack. And um, camp. So it's recommended as a, as a way to get a lot of money at the beginning of a, of uh, of the game. Ashes were cold. Somebody was just here. Do you have scouting on? You don't. Let's turn it back on. Don't right click on it, left click on it. There we go. I wonder if clicking on these while scouting causes an increase. Because who knows? Could I just sit there and click it over and over? <laughs> ah. No, we don't open anything until we actually cast the spell. It is trapped. Always put a bookmark down. Ah, Serenity Light Crossbow. And repairable as well. And 40 Sovereigns. And Spy Note. And... We now know Gorath of the Ardanian to be on a path to the capital of Krondor. We advise you to continue your duties, but suggest you lie, wait for him on the eastern roads into Krondor, as is likely they will take an indirect route there. <laughs> uh, so as to avoid your patrol, he must move no further south. Halt him before he reaches the kingdom settlement of Tenures, Delicon. You, you want to talk indirect? Strap in. Now we could take that crossbow and I could sell it somewhere. 
largely don't care. I mean, that's a weapon craft thing though right now. Um, let's see here. Wrath can get his weapon craft up. There we go. There, I made your I made that better for you. <laughs> Just try to use it against me. Scouting on, scouting on, scouting on. See, end of like a long road that kind of goes in weird oh here we go let's turn on the fighty stuff i wish there were keys on a keyboard i could type in to make this go faster actually because the mouse isn't always accurate and I, nope didn't want to do that casting is what we need to concentrate on with you owen hey we're waiting for us Owen takes a step back, lock your swings, Gorath, moves that way I guess, oh good, he shoots his own dude, Lockler moves over to here, Don't hit me. You won't. I guess we don't need to use these anymore, but it is improving their like their crossbow skills, even if I am not concentrating on them. Rest. Yeah, we don't need to have them use them all up, I guess, anymore. So I could spread that around a bit. That's good. All right. Money. Uh, let's let Locklear get his uh, weapon craft up on this one. And Owen's going to work on his armor craft some more. And I'm going to let Gorath polish his own weapon. That back there. Give that to Owen. Owen's going to that out. gonna happen that's gonna happen that's repairable let's just give that to Gorath and turn on armor craft so he can repair his own armor that's good turn that off all right and you can put that over there if you were really, really given a flame cast, I'm pretty sure is AOE. All right, and you're going to repair that. And that is money for us. And those are spoiled, and we definitely don't want those. We're going to polish that sword up nice. You're going to bang that out. Nothing else I want here. I guess we could. Uh, why not? We'll fix a crossbow. It's still weapon craft. You get that, and you polish that. That goes back in the body. And that goes back in the... Yeah, that goes back in the body too. Just want to be sure that... All right. North to Dimwood. We are not going to the Dimwood. We are going this way. Uh, let's just make sure that it actually is. We're going this way. Wait. North to Dimwood. <laughs> I would have ended up in the Dimwood. Did we explore over there? Let's see.
Ah, I got turned around, that's why. Sometimes it does that. Hang on. This is back the way we came. Oh, we need to go more that way and go north like we're going towards the dimwood. I see. So we need to go this way. And we need to camp for the night. Because otherwise we'll end up in... We'll end up on the route to Agley, which we don't want to do just yet. Hmm. Oh. Passage is blocked. Let's move back the other way, Locklear says. Looks like as if this entrance is closed for good. Okay, that's fine. That seems like it'd be very dangerous anyway. Still going the right way. Yes, I think we are. I think we are? Sure. Sometimes these roads just, like, run out, right? We have nine days of rations left. I think we're doing okay. Okay, I didn't see anything interesting over there. Oh. Shit. It was an ugly mob standing in a semicircle. They waved angry fists at Lockley trying to smooth out the situation. Look, I don't know what the problem is, but sure we can work something out. He said calmly, surely we can come to some kind of peaceful agreement, don't you think? Unfortunately, the mobs seem quite insane. All right, what do we got here? He gave me room. Don't want to have to deal with that. Probably this. Rest a moment. Rest a moment. Sure. Wow. We are not hitting people. We have hit all the people. Moving from right to left. Same as before. Give that Locklear polished stuff. Ah, I see he still had weapon craft on. And Owen had armor craft, and Gorath has scouting on. Is your armor repairable? It is not. Don't have to worry about that. Yours is not. I don't have to worry about yours. And Gorath's is fine, and he could stand to polish that. So we'll just turn that on. Good. It's good. Uh, 
repair that. Thank God. Thirteen. Twelve, twelve, thirteen. That's fine. Repair. Repair. Oh, we got one more to do, don't we? Yes. That's not bad, actually. I might be able to... I don't know if that'll get any better than what Locklear's got on. Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. Cool. Now, it'll usually do parties' abilities have increased if something has changed in the meantime, uh, but you haven't actually gone back to see what has changed. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of like... Yeah, it's um uh it's just like, oh well your abilities have gone up, your abilities have gone up because you haven't gone back to see what those abilities were. Sylvan I can teleport. Which means I can teleport to here. I can teleport to here. Literally, you can teleport to the place in Sarth once it's open. There's actually a couple of temples that are so close to each other that it's like, you can teleport between them, and it's like 10 sovereigns, but you can just go outside and walk about a minute. So that's good. We now know how to get out of Sylvan. Or how to get to Sylvan anyway. Flame was cold. Yep. Enter. All right. Talk. Priestess escorted them, ex expecting a chamber in keeping with the rest of the grandeur of the temple. Lockley was startled when they were led into a cramped room, room where an old woman sat reading through. Where an old woman. Let's try that again. Where an old woman sat reading through a sheaf of papers. Glancing up, the high priestess squinted at them, then shook her head. You'll excuse me, but I was expecting someone else, she said, laying aside the papers she had been reading. A few days ago, I sent a summons to one of our faithful, a Franklin that lives in the north, to the north of Egley. I doubt he would have been able to get to you, Owen replied. We ran into a band of men just outside the temple who seemed bent on killing any that came up the road. Priestess exhaled loudly. <sighs> the Quigin fever is spreading here, and likely those were more men infected with it. If you were to go to him and tell him the way is clear, I would consider it a very great favor. Looking back down uh, at the track scattered in her lap, she rubbed her eyes. You'll forgive me, but I really must get back to work on these. Please see yourself out. God is blessing on you. Ah! Oh. Block there across an audience. The servants waiting. The plump woman dressed in brown robes appear in the courtyard. A quizzical look etched in her face as she hurried across the flagstones. Glancing at Locklear, she has an eyebrow. You're the father of the child? Locklear blinked. I'm no one's father as far as I'm aware, but... Then why in the sweet goddess's name are you here? The woman asked, blinking furiously as beads of sweat trail into her eyes. I've got four exhausted acolytes and a terrified woman who we aren't sure will make it through birth. Then I have a priestess come running and tell me that the Lord is demanding an audience. Did you just decide to drop it in chat? Turning red, Lockley tried to make amends. I didn't really mean to, but before he could finish, the priestess storm storming back across the courtyard. Okay. So. We found a side quest. Uh, north of Egley, I think it was, was this Franklin that she talked about. But to get to Egley... Ugh, that's Egley. Now, we could go back down the road and probably find him before we get to Egley, and I wasn't intending on getting to Egley or Tanniers at this point. But we could go back down and take care of this now, and then come back this way. And I'd rather do it while I remember, so maybe it's worthwhile. We did just pick up some more rations. So it's like the game is telling us, start running south. That's going to go north again. Where are we? Back down this narrow route. Work our way east. We've 
seen this before, I'm pretty sure. Yes, we have. That's new. That's new. We actually never went to the dude's uh, 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 barn. We should have done that. Oh, well. The door swung open. Good days to you. Fine, sirs, the man <laughs> said the man at the door. My name is Franklin Hurley. I'm going to be of service to you. Lockley cleared his throat. We were told at the Temple of Sylvan that you might want to see us. You spoke to the priestesses? He asked incredulously. I wish to speak with them of next year's cross, but three howling idiots wouldn't let me pass. We won't be having any more trouble with those three, said Gorath. Franklin excitedly retreated to his house and returned the moment later with a pouch of coins that he demanded they take as a reward. Lockley tried to turn the money down, but the man insisted. They thanked him for his kindness and generosity, then they left. Barn. Lockley pushed open the door of the wooden barn. Inside, he found stalls containing a standard mixture of animals. Standard mixture of animals. The floor of the barn, or an array of animals, you know. Anyway, uh, the floor of the barn was covered with a pungent mixture of hay, dust, and animal dung, and the native's eyes water. He was glad when they left a few minutes later. Sometimes there's just nothing around, and that's okay. Sometimes there's a hole in the ground. Sometimes it has a bunch of money in it. Sometimes you just throw those swords away because who needs them? God. We did the thing we had to do. And that took nothing to do, so that's good. Uh, it was very little effort on our part. That felt great. I stole this man's money that he's been hiding here. Maybe. Uh, now we can go back. Though I am still like, Christ, I should just go back to Sarth and go down and see that dude and, like, get that over with. Ah, yes, Arclight. No, you took that money as payment for sharpening his sword. Yes. <laughs> Good point. All right. Probably nothing else along here anyway. That's fine. But it is nighttime. Sleep. Do we go back? I can always buy more. Yeah, you know what? We go back. I just want to take care of this shit now. All right. We're going to do it the... This is going to be distracting. All right. So we're here. South to Crondor. Over top of these lovely gentlemen. Where are we? We're almost at Sarth. So that's pretty good. Sleep for another day. Pass that guy. That's the road to Sarth. That's Brother Mark. We'll just drop a bookmark anyway. Oh, a box. Oh, we got effed. Right, how do these work again? Object will be pushed. But which way will it be pushed is the problem. So this gun thing, you push something in front of it so that it can't... Um, I'll just like Gorath sit.
You can't push it that way. Ah, wait, no. Use that to hit that thing. That turns it off. But it can be... It, something can pass through it. So if Gorath walks in front of that, doesn't he actually trip it? I don't think there's a way to get in front of this thing. Fuck it. Okay, good. It just works. I guess if we were like hard up for, we could have just camped there for a while. That would have been fine too. Word lock box. You can see it about, you see it about in field and town. It cannot get up, but will oft fall down. You see it about in field and town. It cannot get up, but will oft fall down. R S O E R S E L could be rain S E N A it's also leaf I R A I O E N rain Oh isn't that nice Actually that's hard to deal with because I'm running out of space. Uh, you get that, and you're gonna fix it. And you're probably then just gonna hand it over to Locklear, because it will be in better shape than his. That's nice. We'll leave this standard kingdom armor behind. Now, Amulet of the Upright Man. Owen looked at the medallion skeptically, and Crondor similar amulets were sold as fool's trinkets. I think we talked about this. It's a uh, description to Banneth, the god of luck and of thieves. Can affect player statistics, you're right. So his lockpick is 81%. Given the amulet upright man, 96%. That's a plus 15 just for carrying that thing around. Do we need it? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if I can get him, uh, if I can get him up to 100%, then that's great. But already we're at 96. That's not bad. Yeah, I'm going to definitely keep it till we grind up. Another word lock box. These are nice. Swaleg, the famous Mordril craftsman, guarantees his work until the end of time. W O R G S E L. Let's see here. Ah, Swaleg. Spelled backwards. So we have is gallows. So W H H. It's probably hangman. Nice. This is all good. Hey man, where should I keep my terrible sword? I don't know. How about we put it inside this box sealed with a sealed with a riddle? Yeah, that's you know what? Why not? That was three piles of money, yes. It might even have meant something in a way, but I don't know. see anything else in this area we are definitely looking for a barn and a house because Roe had talked this up as a thing to do oh oh that's a temple temple of sung again that's fine i knew there was a temple around here somewhere teleport design was odd yes it is so We've all read this stuff before. So from Sung, that's right. You can go from Sung to here if you wanted to, and it's a very short trip, but you can't do it yet because it hasn't been repaired yet. So Sylvan, Killian, Iship. We are definitely going to use this to get to Sylvan. So I'm glad that we found that temple and said, let's do this. Because I need to get, we need to get out of here. Actually, well, yeah, because I need to walk along this area, this, this road to see if there's anything to kill along there. Obviously to, you know, level up a bit. Um, 
So we won't go all the way to Iship. We'll go to Sylvan and we'll walk through here. Enter. And we'll talk. Locklear asks to see the High Priestess. She can't see you. Turning, they noticed another hawkish-looking priest half-hidden in the shadows of the colonnade. His eyes rimmed red. He rubbed vigorously at his face before rising to stand next to his fellow priest. Maria and I just put her abed ha about a half hour ago. She woke screaming this morning. The two priests exchanged a significant look, but the meaning of it was lost in Locklear. Is she ill? He interrupted. No. No, the taller priest said with assurance. It's just only a symptom of things that have been going on here for a short while. It will pass. You sound very certain, Kellen, the other priest said angrily. None of us has slept well in weeks. Our healer is so exhausted they may not even be even bind so much as a finger pricked on a spindle. There's something evil at work here. Bemused Locklear looked at Kellen. Why would someone be trying to keep you from sleeping? Who could do it? Both priests shrugged. The purpose is beyond us, but we know that whomever is responsible is magician and very close by. The shorter priest replied, I have also sensed in his dream sendings that he has others with him, soldiers perhaps. I don't actually believe he means to communicate with us, but instead with someone far away. Either way, I don't believe any of us shall have an hour's rest until he is dead, until we have discovered what he wants. All right. Cool. So that's good. And we know that it's affecting everybody who, uh, seems like everybody who lives in the area who also has like magical powers. Oh, it's going to be a fight. Is that enough to do the job? Let's find out. Don't hit Locklear or don't hit Gorath. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just ruin his day. We did not ruin his day. I'll hit him with a sword. And I'll hit him with a sword too. Great. Ah, his... You could tell his accuracy melee went up because he... missed every time. Aha! Fatimore's formula. Infamous by reputation, the Notorious Strength Potion had on several occasions disrupted proceedings at Lancer's tournaments. Expressly forbidden because of its unbalancing effects in combat, it still commanded high prices from soldiers looking to advance their positions with employing lords. So it is a Strength Potion. That's good. We have two different packs of rations. Why? Because one of them's probably spoiled or poisoned. Give you that. I'll take this. And go into armor craft. Weapon craft. Didn't have to do that. Whoops. And go over here. Yeah. More poisoned rations. It's funny because when we got the Amulet of the Upright Man, it was like, oh, that's super cool. Because I remember doing that in the original game that we, uh, that uh, my friend Brian and I had played. Uh, we didn't have any idea what it was for. Found our barn though. Aren't there like three dudes? Am I losing my mind? Maybe I am. Um, so we were just like, it's got to do something, but what does it do? And we could never figure out what it did. And of course, now you have access to the internet and all this other stuff. It's like, oh, did you know it just does this? Ah, oh, we found the barn. All right. So clearly there's something waiting for us in here because his wife is dead. So what's about to happen? 
The air rippled as if the world about them were nothing more than a curtain to be yanked aside. Four figures warped into existence before their very eyes, all mordial and all armed. One of the assassins dressed in finer wear than the three who flanked him bared his teeth as he spoke. Gorath! Lucan Choi Nekad Sev Delagon, Bachal Ed Hell. Bachal, Baka Al Ed Hell, Ed Hell, El Ed Hell, El Ed Hell, El Ed Hell. Gorath Lockler glanced questioningly at his companion, watching as the mortal withdrew his own weapon, the black gaze fixed on the others of his kind, arrayed before them. Defend yourselves, Gorath asked coldly. No moss trooper this, but a sorcerer, Nago. Of those that are said to have served Delicon before the coming of the Six, he is known as the most powerful magician of my kin. Only we three, or he and his will, will see the next morn. So in chapter one, the most powerful sorcerer just shows up and is here to, like, kick our ass. Fortunately... Sorcerer's Battle! Can't reach him from here. I'm gonna do some damage here. Now, yeah, 69%? That's pretty good. Boom. All right, we won. And our abilities have increased. For example, which? Definitely not scouting. All right. Ah, uh, we have a spy note, that's good. We have Alphafane's Icer. Frost encrypted the insisted. Frost insisted the crystalline point of the magician's tool. Faint tendrils of mist trailing its arc as Owen waved it back and forth. And not for the engraved words and sandal, you might not have guessed its purpose. For magical treatment of a blade, Althafane the Artificer. That's our magical thing. 50 sovereigns. Have a spy note. Here's a sword. Uh, spy note. Master, we have placed the false notes concerning an attack to the south of Tanniers in the chest he requested. Provided they gain access to these messages, they should fall fall most blindingly into your elegant trap. I applaud your stratagems, Fredre. Might hold on to that spy note. I don't know if it's going to come in handy or not, but we'll see. Uh, what else here? I need to start drinking some of this stuff. Or using things. Uh, let's give him the shovel so I can have room for that, so I can start fixing more armor. I already had my armor craft on. I didn't bother fixing any of the stuff before we came over here. Uh, Hadhayosh, uh, Hadhayosh, Hadhayosh. Uh, this is... Betrayal of Crondor was actually made available for free by Sierra on their website, floppy disk versions only, um, but also... Yeah, I have the CD version of it, but also you can buy this from GOG.com or uh, Steam. You can buy the version that runs in DOSBox on Windows. Um, you can also get it, you can get the CD version for free if you can find an old hardcover copy of Crondor the Betrayal, which is the novelization based on the game. How did you do here, Lockie? Oh, you're still fine. That is... I can't do anything to that. That's fine. Let me get rid of that. I can definitely do something to that though. Let's let's get Gorath's weapon craft on. How do you do here? That's repair repairable too. Uh, let's give him that. And turn his armor craft on. Fix his own stuff up. And you're fine. Still, that's not, but you have weapon craft on already, so we'll let you repair that. And you have, we'll give you 
one of these to touch up your bow with. Yeah, not much, but it's going to give you a boost to your weapon craft stat anyway. Uh, armor craft is what we're doing with Owen. That's been repaired. Yeah, hell yeah. Now, of course, um, I am probably way more powerful than is expected to, you know, that, that would be expected to, uh, be at this point in the game. Um, but probably also not by that much more. I mean, the, the swords and the, and everything are really the thing that are doing it, but yeah. You know what? That's also worth. Uh, that's also worth weapon craft. It's. I guess it is just worth repairing some of these things. And it means that the person who comes along and steals all the stuff from them, ultimately, I'm going to sell that somewhere just because it's worth a bit of money. That's repairable. And those are poisoned. Don't need arrows. Yeah, if you go right down to, to Krondor, you probably end up ruined. I seem to remember that we were have we we did have a bit of a time. Uh and I think we had we lost this fight and we think we either saved and tried it again, or I think we just like uh were like forget about it and moved on. That's fine. Now what's in here? He said, putting down another bookmark. Luckily, paused before the large wooden barn. The memories of combat still fresh in his mind. He pushed gently in the door and slipped into the quiet darkness. Finally convinced it was indeed empty, he came out shaking his head, they mo then motioned for them to leave. Though the circumstances might suggest otherwise, this didn't feel like a chance encounter. This is Rose Barn. Do you think he had something to do with this attack? I think the bastard farmer set us up. He'd best have paid well for his betrayal. I'll take my recompense from his hide if I ever cross paths with him again. Now, we were planning on going back that way, so maybe we will cross paths with him again. Though we also said we were going to stop at the temple and uh, warp our ass out of here. Uh, almost certainly, uh, SK Ren, this same guy is the one who would cause people to not sleep. Uh, he's that close to Krondor. It's that strong in this area. He's the only magician of note. He gave himself like a name. Uh, I have a feeling that he was the one who was doing all the dream sending. And so if we go talk to other people, they're probably going to be like, oh, it's not happening anymore. Kellen greeted them. You look a little more lively than the last time we met, Locklear said. Have you gotten a bit of rest? The first I've had in a while, the priest admitted. As I suspected, the dreams plague us no more. I've even heard our healer is once more on his feet. Our high priestess is still tired as yet, but I assume she will be back about her duties in no time. Things return to normal as by the will of Sung. Gorath hissed through his teeth at the bowing priest. Like all priests, you credit those who watch and not those who do. Snapping abruptly upright, a hurt look glowered in Kellen's eyes. What do you mean? He means, when he interjected, that we found the person responsible for the dream sendings. There was a mortal magician, and we took care of the problem. Sensing that the boy might go too far in his glory hounding, Locklear seized Owen's arm in a tight grip. Please forgive my companions for their outbursts. They have been on the road for quite some time and have forgotten their manners. No apology is necessary, the priest said, removing Locklear's grip on Owen's arm. They are quite proper in asking acknowledgement. How may I reward you? Do you have any spells I might learn? Owen interjected. <laughs> Seeing the anger flaring in the senior's eyes, he quickly amended, If there are... Other magicians, like them, it might be prudent for us to be better prepared to meet the challenge. Kellen nodded. I have one such spell I can teach you that will allow you to protect yourselves, that the others will stay here. Fuming, Locklear nodded his this his reluctant assent. Ass assent, yes. Taking a seat next to the reflection pool, motioning for Garath to do likewise. Wordlessly, both sat down and prepared for a long wait. After several hours, Owen returned, a light smile flickering on his lips. But in the intervening time, Locklear's anger had not abated. Thanking the priest as graciously as he could, Locklear turned and stormed from the temple's courtyard, his charges falling quickly behind him. All right. I mean, so, yeah, to cat and to kind of keep everybody in, in loop of what's going on, it's 11 o'clock, so we're technically at the end of the stream. Um... But I do want to kind of get us to pass the point where we were and, and roll on here. So we might just from here warp on. Uh, keep in mind that Owen stumbled upon their camp at the beginning. It's been, you know, 80 goddamn days in game at this point. But he stumbled upon their camp and was like, hey, 
uh, I'll help heal you because you seem like in, in, in a problem. And they formed an impromptu party and Locklear's just trying to get Gorath to Krondor and is like, well, if Owen's going to travel with us, that's great too. It's all good. But as far as the game is concerned, it feels like they've, you know, it's, if they've only really been on the road for like three weeks, as far as the story parts are concerned, they haven't really gotten to know each other, but given the battles they've been in, I figured by this point, they'd be like, you know, you'd be a little more like, okay, this is probably worthwhile, but still, still, we gotta, we gotta go, dude. So I wonder what, what spell I got. That'll be interesting. Uh, let's actually just step outside and see if I can figure it out. Spells. Flame cast, spare thy eyes, invitation, gift of sung, Hocho's haven. Skin of the Dragon, Candle Glow, Stardust, Eyes of Bishop, Sincerity. I think maybe Gift of Sung is what we got from this. Uh, I don't know about Hocho's Haven. Uh, and I don't think, I don't think clicking on any of these, yeah, none of, that, none of that will actually tell us what's going on. So we're going to take Armor Craft off, put Scouting back on, take Weapon Craft off. Nice. Put Scouting back on. Hocho's Haven we got from here. Okay. That's like a... Um, it's a, it's a protective spell and I'm not really sure what it does because I haven't read all the things about what it does. Do we go north to Sarth and see if we can talk to Brother Mark again? Because he remembered, like, he was all, all about like, oh, this sucks. This stupid thing happened and it sucks. We were right here. Here we go. Brother Mark hove into view, still weeding a hole in his handy fist. He gestured Locklear with it. So you didn't get your ear full last time. What brings you back to the Brothers of Sarth? Everything's gone. Vaults. So it must not be that important. Let's go into Sarth real fast. Go to the temple. They still haven't got that built in yet. Enter. Talk. The Abbot came quickly. A man of advancing years. Uh, Father John. Welcome to Ship's Abbey. We thank these guys. We talked about that. Uh, Secret Brother Mark. Nothing else to do. Exit, I guess. Shop? It's good music. I like this. 400 gold for Flamecast here. Yeah. How are we doing on rations? We got rations. I mean, some of us have rations. Twelve, thirteen, twelve. That'll do. Fine. And I guess I could buy a seven. Sure. Not even gonna bother concentrating on it. Just whatever. Fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Ah, oh, Hocho's Haven shields target from damage. Doesn't say doesn't say about the whole um uh what kind of damage. If it's a magical damage thing, it's probably just damage damage. Um I don't think there's anything here I want to buy. We could go back down in the thing and I could try that Noble's Passkey to try to get into the frickin' uh thing under Sarth, but I mean also <laughs> also Locklear's got like Way higher. Um, he's at like 96 lockpick now. Oh, why not? What the hell? Yeah, save a bookmark. That'll be fine. Where were we headed? Just... Okay, now where do we go? Uh, south into the, uh, south and then east. Then where were we headed? South, and then it'll be the first one on our, on our left. All right. Turn that on for lock clear. That's a noble's pass key. Didn't break. Gilders. That didn't do anything. 
but that opened the lock. All right, let's put that bookmark down again. Ah, okay. The creatures howled, starting about the subtle assault. They thrashed about angrily as locked their stomach tied itself in knots. As many times as he found himself in a fight, he never could shake the strength feeling he was about to die. He was about to die. Neat, though, that it's like works that in. That's kind of cool. I bet you guys don't like fire. All right, despair thy eight eyes. Hey, Matt. Thank you for the raid. I have no idea what Matt's playing, but I'm sure coming from whatever he was playing to this 320 by 240 uh, or whatever it is, VGA thing has probably got to be a little startling. Anyway, that fight was great. And Lockler's accuracy crossbow went up. Excellent. Big room. Probably not supposed to be here until later. This dude has healing herbal packs on him. I'll take those. I do not need that torch. Put down another bookmark. I mean, bookmarks are good, but also should not be the be-all end-all of managing my saves, obviously. Yeah, we're going to go a hair long here, obviously. Uh, said obviously too many times in that sentence. We need rest. First, a word lock box. Here's a, here's a trick. Word lock boxes apparently are never trapped. Two brothers wanted to race a course to see which had the slowest horse. Since neither wanted to spur his mare, what must they do to make it fair? Trade horses. No, I guess it's trade mount. Nope. Trade mares? That's that seems to work, yeah. Trade mares. <laughs> nice. 100% Great Tower Plate. That's pretty good. Let's have a look at what it does. So let's look at the Elven Armor, actually, real quick. Elven Armor. Giving you 25% uh, Armor Mod. Uh, racial Mod is Elf. Great Tower Plate. It's Dwarf. 40%. Gallon Grief Sticker? No, so, Sword of Kinyur. Yeah. Locklear hefted the sword respectfully in its hands. Uh, in the hands of its dwarven makers, it would doubtlessly have can be considered a two-handed bastard sword, but even the most diminutive human beings would have been hard-pressed to get more than a hand and a half over its spiral pommel. Right. And it is 25, 33, 15, 0. This is a fine sword to sell. Also, while we're here... I'll turn on weapon craft for Gorath and weapon craft for because we are going to use some of this to keep our bows shiny. Now each of them has a bonus bow string, which is probably not necessary, but eh, we're here. Ah. And weapon craft's gone up, well, because we did the Aventurine. Back to scouting. Scouting. So yeah, 96% lockpick was what got us in that. That's pretty damn good. Um, worth coming back here to get the really nice armor uh, that we will probably end up just selling anyway. But frankly, that's that's fine. We're not selling it right now, and that's okay. We need rest. Okay. Probably end up back at Quester's View again. 
So we're going to go to Sylvan, weren't we? How do I get out of here? Uh, turn right at the next corridor. Oh, you know what? There we go. Went into the door. Yeah, we're ready to get moving again. Back in Sarth, and there is no place to sleep here. And we can't warp out of here. And we could camp. But you know what? Let's not worry about that. Sort of Kinir. 2533. This thing is like 821. Yeah, good sword to get. Getting at the top of the game, hard to get, but... Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to save. We're going to save. And if nobody minds, we're going to uh, just have... Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to save. I'm going to take a commercial break. When I come back... I'll have either decided whether I'm going to play a little bit more to get us a little bit further, or whether we'll just read the subs and be done and the stream's over. So please just sit still for three minutes while I take a break. Uh, I will be right back. It's hard for me to make my decisions because I am indecisive when it comes to this kind of thing because I'm having so much fun. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. We put a save down, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, well, strap in. We're playing longer. <laughs> Largely, that has to do with uh, I have to go talk to Heather and be like, hey, so is it is it cool if I go longer or should I not go longer? And, you know, that's what it's like when you have a relationship is you do need to talk to each other. And that's what we did. So we talked to each other. So we are going to teleport out of here. Uh, to Sylvan. Because that'll get us back on the road to where we were going before anyway. Like the little dots. Locklear recalled the mandala. The mandala. The mandala. 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 Like a wheel of fire, it exploded across Locklear's consciousness, vanquishing the world in a searing blaze of white light. For heartbeat, all that existed in the universe was a single point of rotating fire spun by an unseen hand with incredible power, spun by the hand of a god. Locklear blinked as abruptly as it burst into existence, the mandala was gone, replaced by a simple painting upon a temple wall, a new temple wall. Nearby, a clutch of darkly robed acolytes waited, their faces registering neither shock nor fear at the sudden arrival. You knew we were coming, Locklear asked, stepping away from the symbol. As a courtesy, we are, we are given some warning by the sending temple, one of the priests said. You will likely feel a little disoriented for a time, but the sensation... Should pass. Be welcome. Let's try to talk to the woman again. Lockley requested an audience. Nope, that's the same thing that happened before. So no worries about that. That's all good. Uh, we can leave the Temple of Sylvan. And there should be a bunch of dudes dead on the ground somewhere. Maybe I'm standing on them. Maybe traveling by this just wipes them out? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, we need to go... The road bends, but who knows where... Okay, road bends that way, road bends that way. So the temple is essentially, I think, right at the right at the crux of the crossroads, it seems. So we're going to go this way. Actually, here, let's, uh, let's really zoom out. Yeah, I feel like that's probably going to make the best sense. head this way we're gonna head this way we're gonna actually go through this area just to see if there's some do i have the scouting on again i do that's good nothing else on for anybody else no nope. okay cool i could only imagine what this would be like if um oh Ah.
We'll fight and then we'll have a nap. That'll be great. If this was actually made with like a real like 3D engine that was uh, more like how we expect it to be, that would be uh, maybe a little easier to follow for a lot of people. All right, charge forward, caught them off guard. Plug them full of not being able to see stuff. That would suck like a lot. Like being in the position of um, like, oh my God, here comes some guys. I'm blind, I'm dead. Oh no, rather I'm blind, I'm on fire, uh, I'm dead. All right. Our stealth went up because we succeeded in ambush. Okay, uh, let's start the process again. Armor craft, our stealth went up, that was good. And turn those off. Scouting back on, you don't have to fix any of your own stuff yet. And your stealth went up over there, that was good too. And you're gonna do weapon craft. Those guys didn't even touch us, so we're not that concerned. I mean, I guess having crossbows, it's probably worth letting him get a little weapon craft in too while we're at it. Doesn't need to. Just burn through our whetstones awfully fast, but eh. And our armor's hammer is almost dead. We're gonna have to get a new one here. What were these? Normal ass rations. Well, I have stacks of. I have a stack of normal ass rations at the moment. That's extra, so maybe I'll just hold that as well. Armor craft went up. I forget which one I clicked on, left or right. Looks like that one. Brand new whetstone. More rations. He doesn't have room because he doesn't have enough space other than the rations. There we go. Uh, whetstone getting used up. Give that one to Gorath. Back on there. There we go. All right, now we're definitely going to need to get a new hammer at some point. And sleep. Sleep! Now, where did that actually go? Anywhere? Went over to here. Ah. Word lock box. Up and down they go, but never move. T. R. S. A. Yeah, I saw it posted in chat. Stairs. That's good. Ah, poison arrows. Those are worth some money. Let's read this. I'm requesting that as many mortal soldiers as possible be moved into position in the town of Tanders immediately. We are anticipating the arrival of Gorath and have orders to kill him. Make certain he dies if he attempts to move down the eastern roads. So that's, as we found out, all fake. We're at that. We can have that too. Why not? We'll sell those. Uh, we do not have a hammer to repair the, that with. And it's definitely repairable, so we'll just dump it back in there. 
are Poison Bolt Bearer than Flame. 7 plus Crossbow, minus 5 Crossbow and Skill. 25 Crossbow, minus 10 Crossbow and Skill. So, probably not strictly better. Would you rather be poisoned or on fire? It's true. Yeah. Uh, you do way more damage with these, but... Uh, and you are more accurate with these. By a bit. Enchanted bolts are probably the better way to go. I'm going to hang on to them for the time being. Pair that as well. Ooh, a lot of venturing. Closest place to go from here would be um, uh, in L'Oreal. There's the Kingdom Goods place, so I might just carry those with me for a bit and get rid of them at that point. that too i don't know sure why not leave the spy note in the box move onwards converse ah head to the north there's always a possibility the mortal will have more assassins waiting for us do we risk it hello something weird about my hair just don't like that long curl. Okay. I want it to. Let me look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Better. Better. Excellent. Days passed. It's like the exposed feeling created by the defile. Yeah. We emerged near Hawks Hollow. How close to Hawks Hollow? He asked. Well, that path there originally. We're gonna go up to L'Oreal. We'll go to Kingdom Goods. It'll be great. Did I go to this house? No. But I could always use pick locks. Since I did bust a bunch of them. No, no, hang on, hang on. We want to go north. north up through some of these areas that I may not have actually gotten to. Sure. I guess I could go to Hawks Hollow and actually trade in some of the uh, um, the shells. How far away from that place again? I'm closer to L'Oreal. I'll just go to L'Oreal and sell them at the Kingdom Goods store. Basically, I think everybody will... Uh, I think every store will just buy from you. Yeah. They'll just buy things that are like gems or uh, valuable stuff like that. it taverns there at least uh is this the store yeah that's kingdom goods all right so that two-handed broadsword 157 45 sovereigns sure this thing i don't think i'm gonna need it neither does he <laughs> crap uh what else do i have here artificer's hammer haggle that shit down Thank you. Can't handle crossbows. Okay. Can you handle these? Yes, you can.
what else do you have on hand here, my dude? Bowstrings, rope, shovels, torches. Definitely use some aventurine, I think, so we'll haggle that down. You know what, I'm just gonna turn haggling on at this point. We're gonna sit here haggling to get stuff. Might as well benefit from all aspects of it. Not all aspects. There we go. Better than paying full price for something. Except you will not take those. Ugh. I'm going to repair that armor. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Back in that, thank you. We're gonna go back in that shop. We're gonna sell that armor. Excellent. And it's a buy sell situation, so I can't do anything about that. Uh, nope. Tavern. I feel like most of these places are just not gonna be available. Swig of ale. This is nice. They were greeted warmly. After a friendly chat and a swig of ale, they refused any further hospitality from their host. You've been more than generous, Lockley said, grabbing his pack. I think it's time we made for the road again. Doesn't seem there's anybody about. Doesn't seem there's anybody about. And we do know that north of here, it, up in here, is the other... Uh, it's the other place. The other temple. There it is. Temple of Ishap. Uh, what is it you want? We are travelers. Oracles in the east, uh, in, in hills of the east of Malak's Cross. So we're not going to worry about that. And. I guess we're kind of just where we're at is get to Tirsog and then we can in through there. No idea where the hell they're supposed to run into Michelle the healer at some point, and I have no idea where she is. So where will this go if I follow this? Tearsaw goes to there. I guess we just go straight north. We'll be okay. I mean, there's going to be fights along here that'll be probably reasonably rough. But we're looking to get to Tearsog. Here it is. Three home and pawn. Now I can probably get rid of these things. <laughs> or not. How much for that? Wow. Four charges left in my ring of Frandir. I could, uh, could buy some loots and let the other guys get better at barding. I mean, Owen's not going to be with us forever. We have to trade people out from time to time. Anyway. There is no repair here. Practice loot. Hunt. So many picklocks. No? All right. the tavern? Nope. No one has answered. It is past midday, so abandoned. 
tavern should be open. Cherry common room. Is it grown from the floorboards? Middle-aged man. Can I answer you some food? Would you like? No food. Probably passed out inside. Like we said, remember the man's condition. Let's let him sleep. Uh, yeah. I think we're just... A horn sounded in the Inkland Bell. Immediately, several additional notes echoed the first, passed on down the bend of the canyon while shadows began to appear along the length of the defile. Rising up from behind rocks and out of ditches, a dozen scattered men responded to the call to arms. Appearing at the mouth of, the pre of a previous unloaded cave, a 40 looking gentleman lumbered down from his hiding and seeing that his guards weren't needed, he whistled for their dismissal. Well, I didn't expect you to be back this way so soon, senor. Actually, wondered if you were going to make it any place at all, cut up like you were. This is Finn. What is your company, Lieutenant Finn? Why aren't they standing standard guard on this pass? With all due respect, Senor, we're digging ourselves out of a pretty mess presently. Not long after you and the mortal trounced through here, a white screamer came up out of nowhere. Worst storm, snowstorm I've seen in 16 years. Thank God that was a... I mean, we've all seen white screamers, right? They're, they're usually in Walmarts. Ten miles on down the dell, the pass is buried under five feet of snow. I sent out guards to help our forward positions, but I'm not positive they can do much. Kind of like lighting your pipe under the bitter, bitter sea. There's no way to get through the Inkland Dell at all. Not unless you're a snow-burring mole or a fire drake. No, sir. Whoever may be in the Northlands of the Kingdom, they've got a long wait on their hands if they need to get down this road. Well, that's it then. We'll have to turn back. Take care, Lieutenant. That's north. We cannot go north. Now, if it comes to the east, that's different. Now, I need a second because I'm just curious about Ah. Okay. Michelle the Healer is in L'Oreal. But we never found her. So I think what happens with Michelle, uh, the healer, is that she's only available if you're injured. Like if you have the plague and you need to find a healer, I think that's the only time you'll actually get to run into her. All right. Breast stared down the pass. If I recall my geography, this road skirts between the high wold and the teeth of the world. He said, ultimately, it leads past the northern garrisons, the high castle, and north warden. What do you think? Do we take this pass? Yes. And uh, to the north of the mountains, undulated like the scales of a great dragon, sloping ever higher as the Thunderhell steps gave way to the even more majestic range of the teeth of the world. To the south, the mountains flattened out, eventually becoming a wide plain known as the Highwald, which stretched south and curled at the feet of a minor range of hills. So I'm going to put down a save. We are now in a brand new zone. That's what that whole, every time there's that, it's like you've moved to a new zone. And there's dudes to attack. And they did not expect us. And I didn't change any of the things. So we could flame cast. It would do area of fire damage of up to 60, but it will cost me 20 of my health. So it's like, this might be a good idea, Except that I give up 20 of my health to do 60 damage. It does 60 damage, like, on the area. I don't necessarily know if that's going to help or not. Like, I mean, it will, but it won't kill all these dudes. I might be better off doing Despair Thy Eyes. Because at least it'll take care of, even though it's one by one... Ninety-five percent to hit. Oh, that did not do much damage. Oh, because it shot him with a poison coral. That's why. Okay, so next is this dude. Lock clear with a flaming coral. Eighty, eighty. There. <laughs> Missed one. Got another. Gorath. 
Just going to keep missing. All day, all night. And these guys keep moving around, so it's very hard for me to tell who's doing what. <laughs> he just moved. Uh, he hasn't moved yet. Locklear gains a chance to take this guy down. 90, 93%. That's good. 75. 75. 75. So wi uh, swinging does more damage, obviously, but it the accuracy is lower. But if you can't hit anything at all, that was a swing right there. I think I want to blind this dude again. I might send Gorath after that guy. That's good. Uh, let's see. We're going to blind that guy. By also engaging with the, um, uh, with the crossbow dude is, keeps him from being able to shoot anything. We're going to take care of, i uh, just pick that guy. There we go. That's good. Owen gets to rest for once. And again, these guys have not decided that I did not have their best interest at heart. Locklear's really doing it. <sighs> yes, I know. Use Fireball, but I would have, like... There's, it wouldn't have done 60 each. It would have done 60 total. And I don't think that would have helped much. Now, time to go through all the bodies. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, good thing I just bought a new hammer because we're going to be here a while. All right. Turn on. Armor craft's already turned on. And uh, we're going to turn on weapon craft. Stealth and RC crossbow went up. That's good too. Turn on weapon craft with Gorath. Why not? Again, I'm the the now. I'm pretty sure that it, that that is the case uh, when I say that it is divided. That, but also having played this game in the past, it 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 ain't great when you discover that like. Um, when you're getting your, when, when it's like, I'm going to use, I'm going to use fireball, max fireball, and you shoot and you miss. And you're like, I just gave up tw tw 20, 20 hit points and didn't do anything. And yeah, that starts to be a little, um, that starts to suck a lot. So that guy, good. Now this guy, oh, flame root oil. Introducing the kingdom by Althafane after several soldiers have been injured by frostbladed weapons. The viscous oil can be bought as protective coating for armor. Any frostbladed weapon that came into contact with the brown fluid instantly re returned to normal temperature. Now, a lot of these things sound amazing. They sound like, oh my god, I should be putting this stuff all over my armor all the time. Why, why would I not do that? Uh, the reason why I tend to not use those things when I'm when I'm looking at them... I don't even need... We're not going to worry about surrounding uh the reason why i tend to not uh use a lot of the mod stuff is that more often than not i didn't even have a chance to shoot a crossbow what no more often than not it's kind of a it, it's again more of a crap shoot right it's like am i actually going to make a difference here or am i going to come across a guy i'm going to have you know flame root oil on my on my on my armor I'm going to run into a guy who has Alpha Fane's Ice Rays, a frostbladed weapon. I'm like, am I going to run into that? It's like, you you might not. And so um, why I'm, you know, using this stuff is okay because you'll get the chance to use it up. But does it, does it really, did it really lend uh, any sort of value? Um, so using it when you find it is not a bad thing. But then what if you run into somebody who has like 
a heat weapon that hits you with the heat thing. It's like, it, that didn't help. Sure. Uh, this is the one I want to do, right? It didn't help, but um, might it actually even hurt you more? I don't know. So I tend to be very, um, I tend to be very like, not sure if it's a thing that I like, I'm not really into the idea of doing it. Wary of it. That's a better way of saying it. I'm just very wary of, of it being of any value whatsoever. I'm glad that we went back and got the gray tower plate though, because that's going to come in very handy. <laughs> Did I put all the stuff back? I did. Okay, good. That was the third guy. They all end up falling in like, are they going to work from the outside in? Because what I would have probably done is uh, gone for that armor there and given that to uh, Locklear instead. Now he has this awesome tower plate. Two more rations. Does it fit? Give him another one from here. Great. Can I get the dude on the other side? I can. Excellent. Why did I do that? What was the one with the armor craft? Can I repair that? Can I repair that? A good bit of aventurine. If you find that the audio is... That was weird. If you find the audio is ducking too much, please, uh, please say so. Um, that's helpful for me to know. Because I know that sometimes I'm talking very loud and sometimes I'm not talking uh, you know, loud enough. And uh, I don't want to be in a position of like where you're finding it difficult to hear what's happening. Okay. Oh, and there's some elven corals and some rations. Elven corals are usually worth a fair bit too. Uh, let's have a look at them. More info. 915. Mm. So great in that they will you were like 100 percent to hit every single time. I guess we could dupe some and I could just leave these here. And these are how much? 25 minus 10. We're still doing pretty good with those, though, and getting to be able to, to hit more does help. Um, having some choices is usually nice as well, though. I'll just put those with him. We'll worry about them for later. If I need to dupe them later, we can always find a cache to, to deal with. And... Great. It's fine. Excellent. Let's have a look at everyone's abilities so far. Or wait, this is what we use. Weapon craft, 70, 71, 48. Brilliant. Now, where are we in? We are a bit of a run until we get to L point and then High Castle after that. And there's already some stuff up ahead of me that we'll be able to, to interact with. Yeah, the new tree sprites are, are kind of cool. Oh, let's put a bookmark down. No one has lived here in quite some time. What about the barn? The barn smelled of alcohol. 
Investigating, they discovered a man propped up against the far wall, a bottle of Keshian ale laying next to him. The bottle was open and half the contents had apparently spilled onto the barn floor when it had been soaked up by a small pile of fresh hay. The combination was quite pungent. The other half of the bottle had apparently spilled into the owner, for he was out cold and snoring loudly. Come on, luckily said, let's let him sleep it off. That might be something that is revealed later to us. Maybe not at all. Oh, we need to heal. Did I turn scouting back on for did I turn anything back on for these guys? No, I didn't. Ashes were cold. Ah. Temple. Temple of Dala. Let's register that. Temple of Dala, Ishap, all these places. So that's good. Got some more temples up. Enter. Same thing as before. Talk. Locklear asked to see the High Priestess. The attendant priest escorting them rattled like a great knight, a broadsword belted at his hip and his head covered in chain link underneath his hood. They passed to the priests in the temple who were similarly attired, the whole of the religious order seemingly geared for a great battle. When at last they entered a small room, the burly priest nodded towards a large paper triptych, which stood near, near the rear wall. High Priestess Risa will see you after she's attended to the sick one. I will return after your business is finished. A small whimper came from behind the shadowed screen, but was quickly shushed by the High Priestess. After a few moments, a lightly robed figure moved out from behind the screen. A bowl of gruel clutched between her small hands. High Priestess, Locklear ventured. Seeing Locklear's surprised look, the woman smiled. Let me guess, I am not as you expected. Many of my faithful think I have talons, eyes of fire, and a sword sheathed at my hip. Moving to a small table, she set aside her wooden bowl and spoon, snatching up a towel to wipe broth from her hands. People misinterpret Dalla's role in the balance of things. While she guards those in battle, she also guards travelers as they sleep and looks after those in need. At the moment, I would value more, far more a bag of grain than I would all the martial skill in the world. Locklear blinked. Why is that, High Priestess? Our stores are nearly empty, she replied. What food we haven't given out to the poor has been stolen by thieves who have taken advantage of her generosity. If we can't get any grain to be milled soon, we'll have to turn away children who have no other source of food. We might be able to bring you rations. The High Priestess shook her head. You can't store rations, not for long. We need a bag of grain. In exchange, I think Dalla might bestow you a boon, though I can't presume upon the Goddess's favor without consultation. I'd speak to you more, but I have others I need to see today. I understand, Lockley replied. Thank you for your time. Ah, yes. Beach in the mid-90s. I stayed up all night playing Crondor. Beach now. I stayed up all night streaming Crondor. It true. Let's see if we can make it to uh, the next town, at least, before we are done done here. So that's Temple of Dala. That's good. It means we have a way to warp back up here if we need to in the future. And belt point is where we're making it to. The um, uh, I did read somewhere that's like if you talk to them about grain, it is something that's it, it is definitely a the hell is that. Okay, so it is a uh, uh, a quest item, and you can go find information about the quest item. Remember Squire Philip, who we saw at the front of the game, and he's like, oh, I have all this information for you and telling you about stuff. If you go talk to him, he'll let you know where you can find it, but you can't take care of it right now. So this is cool. Uh, yeah, free restoratives. Which is, you know, it's nice, definitely. Uh, and I'll probably, I'll give some to Gorath because why not? I wonder, in fact, can I, can I give him, uh, one of these and will that help him as well? 
108, 114, 121, 128, 150. And I could use some too, so maybe I'll take the rest of these myself. good. Helped a bit. Yeah, he, uh, the part I didn't read because I forgot that it takes a while. Um, Lockley probably takes them to the bush, sampling a Dalton Burger. He's, he nod then called to the others. These taste a bit funny, but help me see if I have enough here to bundle into a small pack. <laughs> so... Owen, on the one hand, was like, oh, neat. If I click, if I go to this bush, all the berries I can turn into restoratives. And Lockley's like, oh, neat. If I go to this bush, I can poison us. Two very different bushes on the side of a road. And I took the one less traveled by. Oh, ambush. Damn. Dude's doing some actual damage these days, though. That's interesting. Over here. Locklear's got some flaming quarrels for everybody. Start with you. 84%. Fire into a crowd. You'll probably hit someone. Gorath, in the meantime, has been having a hard time fighting anybody. Finally did some damage. Ugh. Don't want that to happen. Move behind Gorath. Engage the crossbow dude. Owen's going to end up completely screwed here if he's not careful. Over here. Lock clear. Uh, maybe not crossbow dude. Maybe this guy. Crossbow dude. Owen runs away again. This dude. Owen. Oh, God, I could swing and I could try to hit this guy. Probably not worth it. These guys know they're out class now, though, which is nice. So we'll take care of him. Yeah, you're about to get ruined, so... Though apparently Gorath is about to get ruined. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to shoot him. There we go. Good fight. And nobody got any bonuses for scouting because we got ambushed. And thus begins the circle of life. Oh, right. No, if we're going to do this, I lean into it, right? Uh, we're going to do Gorath's weapon craft. I think that's going to be the thing he has to deal with the most here. First, we're going to give... That is already done. That is not. Drag that over there. Gorath gets this one because it's only got a few charges left. Excellent. Takes it back. Armor craft up. And we're gonna bang bang. Bang bang. He took some hits. He's gonna bang bang as well. Great. How was that dude? Now this guy. Poisoned rations. You guys were going to die anyway. Also, yes, if you keep poisoned rations in your inventory because you think you're so smart, it's like, I'm not going to eat them. No, you'll eat them. You'll actually totally eat them. Um, because you're like, well, I'm hungry and they are rations and I will just... I will just have one. Yep, 
It's weird. But it is what you do. I mean, partially that's because you can always... There's anti-venom, so... If you if you end up... Uh, it's, I know it's weird, right? It's like, oh, it's anti-venom, but it's poison. It's like, yeah, but all the poison comes from one place in this game, so... Uh, if you take the, the anti-venom, then you're fine. Or rather, you better have some on you so you can have some, and then you'll be fine. That's lots of rations. I don't think we need that many, but I'll take them all anyway. And we'll throw what we don't need. Yeah, Owen's getting better at doing this. It's nice. Let's throw that in on the dude. And now we have to try to find which one of these guys we've been clicked on already. Uh, he I clicked on. He I clicked on. Click on him. Didn't click on him yet. Right. How much do we have here? Wait. Go. Toot toot. Yeah, it's, uh, as as you stick points out, it took me several attempts at this game before I figured out that rations could be poisoned or spoiled, kept dying in chapter one, and you're 10 years old. Because it's not clear that if you right click on stuff, it tells you things about them that are important, which is, which kind of sucks. Cause it's, it's like, man, I wish that the game, you know, I mean, if you, if you read the manual, um, the manual does at least like give you a lot of information, but I can't remember where we learned that we could do stuff like that. So yeah. I thought we read the manual, but anyway, we were headed this way, I believe. Nothing over here. East. Ah, Cairn of Rocks. That's a cairn, right? Search was futile. Exasperated Locklear stacked the rocks into a pile, partially relieved that at least there hadn't been a trap of some sort waiting for them under the stones. That's probably a good lesson, in fact. Seems like that's supposed to be a lesson. It seems like there's a guy over there. No, it's a tree. Oh, wait. Right. Scouting. Turn off armor craft. Turn off that. Turn on scouting. Those are the only times I'm actually going to be able to... No, I only get to bump up armor craft. Oh, okay. Part of a field, kind of. No, are you kidding? Scent of Sarig. It's safe. Oh, that's a hell of a brooch. That'll be worth some money to someone somewhere. Let's just camp in the middle of this field. And then make our way towards that barn that I saw. Ah. Doesn't seem there's anyone about. Didn't I see a barn? We saw a barn, right? I'm getting so turned around now, damn it. There's the barn. It's up there. Huh. 
Lockley pushed the barn door. The door is jammed, he said to Owen. Come here and see if you can help me open it. Together, the two men pushed, first with steady pressure, then with sharp pounding thrusts. After several minutes, their time equally divided between thrusts and curses, they gave up. The barn goes nowhere. A well. Ah. Drawing some water from the small well, they drank greedily. Then stopping only long enough to fill their pouches, they packed and prepared to leave. Did anything happen to us? It's very important sometimes to, to look. Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, what if, uh, what if instead of, no, the strength, does strength actually increase? It's like 26, 19, 12. Why did the two weakest dudes try to do this? I think it's just not possible. Like, not that it's, like, not possible eventually. It's just not possible now. Oh. Fighting at night. <laughs> and he just shot his buddy in the back, which is great. We're going to stop him from doing things. Gorath, uh, let's see. Let's take on this guy. Gorath is going to shoot this dude with a 97%. Yeah, that's good. Does he drop him in one? No, he does not. Let's start blinding people. I think you're next. No, 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 no. You're not going to run away. Someone's going to hit that dude. And, and if it's got to be me. Let's see. Maybe we can rest here for a second. That's good. Like that. Fall over. Nice. Thus begins the next part of the thing. Right, we got to turn on the armor craft and weapon craft stuff. Uh, I know I make a sound like it's like I hate having to do this, but at the same time, I like it does suck a bit to have to like keep doing that stuff if you want to try to min max your your levels. But the hope is that by uh, doing that enough, you eventually. eventually will have done it enough. Give that back to Gorath. It's a full pack of rations. We do not need a full pack of rations. Though it is very nice to have them offered to us. Great. That uses up that whetstone. We have that one in, uh, still around here. We'll use that. Ah, peasant's key. Yeah, that's, as Map says, at some point the party's going to switch, right? So it's like at that point, you end up with 
not great characters, but you do hopefully have someone still on board who has some pretty good stats and uh, and hopefully have be if we carry our money with us, we'll be able to give them really good gear as well. Uh, that's done. Okay, the dude in the middle, I think. A tuning fork. Oh, instruct the metallic device against his knee, charge, cringing as it sang its high-pitched note. I always dread it when the jonglers tune their instruments, he said, killing the still ringing note. It's that pitch. If my hearing were any more sensitive, I think I'd bleed from the ears. So the tuning fork is... I forget what it's for. But I did read about what it's for, and I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of neat that this thing exists. I don't think... I don't think there's anyone else for me to click on here. Yeah. Yeah, there's no one else for me to click on. That's fine. Till morning. Maybe this person's around. Let's hit there. It's abandoned. Have a lockpick. Have the worst goddamn shell. Is it worth taking? I don't give a shit about that shell. Uh, yeah, Arclight. Actually, what does the uh, tuning fork do? Oh, I'm seeing Pixel Art Dragon says that it makes trolls flee. Sure, that will be handy when I encounter trolls, because I might not want to sit around and fight them. It's 1214. Uh, I'm going to drop a save game right now, right now. Probably end up using this one. Well, why? It's like, oh! Hmm. That even work? Where the hell are we at this point? Uh, 20 was in there. So we're gonna go beach piff 21. Thank you. Still got to get to L point. That's probably it right over there, actually. No, it's just a random house. A house is in badly need of repair, but it was badly need of repair. But it appeared as though someone might be living in it, so Locklear knocked loudly and stood back to wait. A feeble voice called out to them from inside. Who is it? Official kingdom business. We need to speak with you, Locklear said firmly. The door opened slowly on a woman who seemed surprised and dismayed to see them standing before her. Please, kind sir, we didn't mean no harm. The house was abandoned when we found it. Her torn dress fluttered in the small breeze just as her voice fluttered in her nervousness. Owen noticed, sensed perhaps, that she was with child. That's not why we have come. What can you tell us about this area? Anything out of the ordinary? No, no sir, there ain't been much. Wait a minute. A detachment from High Castle camped out just south of here, and I think they left behind a couple of boxes. Didn't look in them, though. Locklear told the woman to stay in the house as long as she and her husband needed to stay there. I don't think the owner has any plans to come back here. Goodbye. Just south of here. Couple of boxes? Oh my goodness. Wasn't even like... It was just a couple of boxes. Not even a chest. We'll drop a bookmark, though, anyway. Bad luck. I don't know why the High Castle would trap their own chests, but who knows. I know we're at nine. I know we're as high as we are for for uh, for that, but at the same time, 
<clears throat> excuse me, he needs to be able to practice too. Oh yeah, heavy crossbow? Medium crossbow, repairable. Experimentally your own snag the bow back, run it as it creaked violent complaint. It was a powerful crossbow, strong enough that a bolt fire from would likely, likely puncture a common soldier's armor. 15 and 5. Now, these are 25 and 25. So I think we're fine. I could sell this. Turn off his lockpick. Ah, uh, sure. Buy some more adventuring when we get somewhere. Maybe to Eld Point. Back on the road. Must be close. This reminds me a lot of. Um, the, the nature of what they've done here reminds me a lot of... Uh, did I go back the wrong way? I did. Uh, the nature of this reminds me an awful lot of, like, uh, driving up and down roads in Alberta where... Um, you go past a, uh, like, a, 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 a tiny little town or something that has, like, maybe a few houses just off the highway. You can just kind of see them. Oh, I think this is it. And here, in fact, is one of those tiny little towns, it seems. Goods. It's a goods store. He sells goods. There's Silverthorn. This is that poison. Worth as careful as he headed up. Knowing a single scratch from its silvery thorns could kill, corpulent red berries dangled from the plant's rose-like stem, each bud had you with deadly poison. It crushed over a blade or an arrow, the silver thorn would make any cut with a weapon far more lethal. Ah, accounts of Shimata Garrison. And there's the anti-venom. I like that it's like, two of these is 52, one of these is 30. So you better make sure you get the thing you want. All right, uh, we are definitely gonna get that. Which means we are definitely turning on Hagling. And we're going to get rid of some stuff. Christ. I traded away something that I can't... Oh, whatever. That's worth a lot. That's fine. Get it out of my whatever's. Will, will you take this? Yes, you will. What about this? No. I feel like I'm going to have to put that elsewhere. I have four. Um, six uses left on that. So. I'll have to probably get rid of that at some point. I guess I could sell that emerald. Sure, whatever. Money's money is all that money's. <sighs> Hang on, that's 12. What was his whetstone? 20. And this was 12. Okay. That's probably fine for now. I know I'm flying back and forth a lot, guys. Sorry. Give Gorath that to hold on to. I'm going to turn his armor craft briefly. He needs to repair his armor. Let's just do that. There we go. Uh, there is indeed, I think there's an inn in this town, so we're just going to turn our barding on for the time being.
Right, accounts of Shimada Garrison. Right. Oh, God. Great. Got a copy of that. That's good. It is a an inn, the royal bed. Barkeep. This is where we go to change out the barding. Bard. We have indeed barded. We'll sleep for the night and we'll explore the rest of uh, of this place later because it's 1223 a.m. where I am. 110 sovereigns is good, right? Let's talk to her. Locklear tapped the woman's shoulders. Uh, Want to talk? She did this whole thing where it's like, yeah, we're not having a conversation. There's this dude. Going anyplace interesting? Ah, freebooters then. No, we've talked to that kind of guy before. What's in the barrel? Lockley pried off the lid, sitting through the thick silt which covered the bottom of the barrel. He shook the contents until he could make out a fake gleam at the bottom of the barrel. Pleased his search hadn't gone unrewarded, he quickly added the 20 silver pieces to their collective wealth. Now, in this game, that's like, holy crap, like, who cares? But when, when I was playing my game, I was like, oh god, yes, anything is good, thank you. Uh, eight sovereigns. Not the nicest place. Uh, would appreciate if you didn't kick the other the other patrons while you were looking for the chamber pot. So another night, yes. Done. And we can't bar it anymore. It's fine. Good. And our ability has gone up. Let's see who went up. Gorath got to 28. That's good. 52 for Locklear. That's good. Owen has stopped needing to be good at this. That's okay. Put in a save game. Let's call it 22. Save. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very optimistic tip jar. I like that for the barrel. Mm, that's good. I mean, nobody else seemed to be looking down there, right? There's just crap in the bottom of the uh, of the um, of the barrel. So let us go back to the booth, and we'll do notifications. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Play it forward tonight. Uh, this is. Let's thank everybody, and we'll talk. Actually, let's talk about what's coming up next. It's technically Wednesday, so I believe. Looks like there's a crossing the streams tomorrow. So that's awesome. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't even know if I'm on it. Crossing the streams tomorrow. That's exciting. Uh, then Lure MTG on Thursday, followed by Tinker Taylor in the evening, and then followed by me again. And then on Friday is uh, Checkpoint Plus, followed by Friday Night Paper Fight. And... On Saturday, it looks like it is my play it forward again. So there you go. And then Rhythm Cafe, obviously, Heather and Ian playing on Sunday. And it is followed by Is This Your Card on Sunday after Rhythm Cafe. Uh, let me thank everybody who has shown up tonight because thank you to everybody for supporting the Patreon. That is really helpful for us. It keeps the lights on in our homes, even. It puts food in our mouths. That's very important. Uh, and also, so does your help on Twitch. Uh, but patreon.com slash loading ready run. Uh, thank you so much for that. If you subscribe to us on Twitch, I'm going to thank you guys in a second and thank you for your bits as well. And on the YouTube memberships, uh, that's also cool. I, we really appreciate that you guys are finding the places where you're comfortable um, wanting to support the channel, wanting to support all the work that we do here. And um, it really does make a big difference and I appreciate that. Now, if you are somebody who backed our Kickstarter, 
the year of Blair Kickstarter from years ago. Uh, you, if you, you may have gotten an email from the Kickstarter or you may not know, but the season 11 DVDs and the season 11 Blu-rays are finished. I have seen them. I have some in my house actually, because I had to check them before I could say these are perfect. Uh, and they are ready to go. They are waiting at the, um, they're waiting at our fulfillment center and you're supposed to be getting emails from uh from the fulfillment center from our store that'll be asking you for an updated address so that they're sure that they know where to send these because we're sending them we're gonna send them once and hopefully not screw anybody's stuff up and the idea now is to do basically a massive blitz of letting you guys all know this if you know people who might have backed this and they might not have found out about this uh feel free to mention it to them uh, i'm just very excited to see that this is finally happening um it's been a long time coming and it takes a lot of work to make Blu-rays more than you would expect than making DVDs, in fact. <sighs> Let's thank everybody who has been watching tonight on Twitch and subbed and gave bits. Uh, for example, a crunchy spider and combatable wombatable uh, got a sub from uh, Megados X. Uh, welcome to the channel. Let's see here. Lock Ray Mono came back as well. Xanto69 with 50, uh, 50 bits. Uh, I don't have to go get milk yet, but I have to get milk in a couple days, so thank you for that. Cursed Human, uh, a parked car for their four-year anniversary. Train Diskenth, Uncanny Jim Jams, Gorilla87, Awabajack on their five-year, congratulations. Ivan Russell for five glorious months. John K235, 78's a big number too. Big Wig the Bunny Soldier, Sens uh, Senshi Sun. Could be Senshi Sun uh, for a year. Thank you. Ink Slayer, 61 months. The Joe, 743. Uh, the exact same. Xantos with another 50 bits. Thank you so much. Uh, Lurker Spine with 100 themselves, celebrating that 81% for on Lockler's uh, lockpick. Zatengo, Hattie Zero. And then Matt showed up with his raid. That was awesome. Whistle, uh, Cheesemo for 37 months in a row. Lonely Cracker for 72 months. That is six years. Yes. Halabast, Vector Zero, uh, Harmonized Melody for a year. Congratulations. Account Made of Ants and Tom Bomb 10,071 back on their second month. And I think you just showed up because <laughs> I think you're probably surprised to see us here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, thank you for coming back. Always appreciate uh, finding out with people who are doing this uh sorry picks uh we are we are wrapping up tonight uh, i went a little bit longer than normal and i gotta cut out here run some ads gotta keep that all good i want to thank everybody for showing up to play it forward tonight to watch me play more betrayal at crondor we are finally past uh we're into the extra time of chapter one where we've left zones one and two and we're actually going to explore the other zones and go the long way around before we get to crondor and actually continue this game and in the process these three guys are going to get very strong. We're going to find some cool stuff. We're going to get all kitted out with some nice gear. Um, and then hopefully, I hope to hell, that we will be able to uh, get the nicer gear for the other guys. And I don't plan on, I don't plan on doing the end run around again to be like, well, now it's chapter two. So now go on a whole tour and, and get everybody else uh, nice and nice and um, powered up. The hope is that by letting everybody, letting the guys like uh, have a couple powerful members in the party that can carry the party through. And if we start having problems then you know, we start having problems, but we'll see, hopefully these powerful gear will help counteract some of that and help guys get strong. That's my hope. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, I mean, I won't unless I'm on crossing streams and I don't know if that's the case. But this is the end of the broadcast day for the Loading Ready Run Entertainment Network. This has been Played Forward. I've been Beach. Have yourselves a wonderful night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay inside if you can. Uh, and get that vaccine if it's coming to you. I just got my first one today. I'm looking forward to when I get my next chance to get another one. Uh, but I have to wait a few weeks, obviously, before that's going to happen. You do it too. Take care.